Hi, I'm Maddie Hockaday, also known as the Anne of this relationship. And I'm Holly Constant, the Leslie. We love Parks and Rec. We love behind the scenes. And we love each other. This is literally the best Parks and Recreation rewatch show. We're your park pals. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. Welcome everyone to Park Pals. Great to have you here with us today. We've got something oh, special. My God. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> well, I think yes. Holly, we've been um we've been spoiled, which I think in turn has been spoiling our wonderful listeners with some great guests. Mm-hmm. And um everybody, please send a shout out to Holly whenever you get a chance for putting <laughs> the time into getting these people because she has been uh, tirelessly getting everybody's schedules together and making sure we can all meet and everything working. And this week we have a very um, special person. I think this is a person that's been in the most episodes because I think uh, Mr. Perd Happley was in nine. Oh, he was in 30. He was in 30? Yes. Perd Happley? Oh, <laughs> yeah. cut that out. I apparently don't know my shit. Um, no, I'm not cutting it out. We're authentic here. I'm sure so many other people <laughs> like think the same thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know why I thought that. No, I think it's maybe Jim because Jim was in nine, I think. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's what it was. And we did. But Pert was in like Jim 30 week. or something like that. Yeah. OK, well, this uh, this but this dude has guest... been in like 15 or 16. So he's been yeah. in a lot as well. <laughs> yes. So go ahead, Miss Holly, and tell us who who we have today. <gasps> oh, my gosh. OK, so today we have Councilman Bill Dexhart, a.k.a. Well, I guess I should say that the other way around. We have Kevin Simons, a.k.a. <laughs> Councilman Bill Dexhart, which sexy we... Dexy, sexy Dexy, which we do talk about um that he his first name is Bill, which uh, I think that's in the first, maybe second episode of um that he was in. But I never would have remembered that his name was Bill unless I was on this podcast, like actually listening to every single word because we always right. call him Dexart. So yeah, very true. But yeah, so we talk about a bunch of stuff. I guess just to preface it a little bit, we do um, talk about um, Patton Oswalt, who is, we do mention, I think we did a pretty good job of like saying who each person was um, as we were talking about them. Mm-hmm. Um, but Patton was the one who was in Ted Party and he did the Star Wars moment, um, which Jay talked about him a lot as well um, when we did that. Oh, side note, if you haven't uh already go back and listen to jay jackson Perd happily's uh episode that we did which is number one incredible to say go back and listen to when we talk to fucking jay jackson like what is our life (laughs) yes oh my gosh (sighs) but um anyway no so uh but also don't do that yet listen to kevin because he's great and he gave us uh, so many great little nuggets we talked and asked so many questions and he was so willing to talk Mm -hmm. about this so you could tell that he's very passionate about what he does and we were so excited to get to ask all of our like fangirl questions of uh the cast and the crew and who he worked with and just got so many cool stories i played a lot of things for him my voice memo i'm so glad that i did that he seemed very open to it Mm -hmm. (laughs) a lot of deleted scenes I do have to remind you guys, go to Peacock and watch the producer's cuts. Please, please, please do that because it is so good. And if you are uh, so interested in the deleted scenes and like what some storylines are that might have gotten cut that maybe ma- didn't make sense. I mean, they did a great job of making it make sense with the cut things. But these are just like excellent little nuggets that they put in. Yeah. Um, so and he had quite a few, uh, you know, cut scenes. But yeah, it's so exciting. And Go follow him on all the things and um i'm just very grateful to him and and honored that he was mm. giving us so much time yeah still a little star starstruck <laughs> yeah and i mean he was just like a, such a cool dude though he just was able to have a regular old conversation with us and he's like his voice i i didn't quite mention it i feel but like he definitely puts on like a um like a councilman businessman uh you know cadence in in Mm -hmm. parks which is so amazing but like his voice is naturally like that but i so i really loved talking to him as kevin and then watching him as dexart because it's so like it 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 melds so well together but he's obviously not dexart he's not you know sleeping with people in caves well i don't think so i don't know maybe his him and his wife have a moment i don't know (laughs) (laughs) 
anyways, well, thank you, Kevin, for being here. And um, I hope you guys enjoy. Maddie, is there anything else that you would like to say? No, I think just sit back and enjoy the um, behind the scenes stuff because it's great. Yes. And uh, don't forget to like and share and all that good stuff. And we hope you have a wonderful week. And please enjoy Kevin Simons. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too. Hey, Kevin. Oh, I can hear you. Oh, perfect. Hey. How's it going, friend? Wow, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, we yeah. can hear you. I got my blue snowball microphone here. Love it. Thank you so Let's much see. for having that. You got the real deal. I got to get me one of them. Oh, my God. Well, this is a, a mic from college that I just repurposed for this podcast because I was like, oh, why really? am I going? Because I had a USB one. I love the yeah. audio tech ones. And I, I've heard good things yeah. about the blue one. Um, but then I had this from college and I was like, why am I not using this? But it's because I didn't have an interface. So <laughs> I was like. <laughs> I want to put your sound up. But you can hear me okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah totally. Mm -hmm. See me okay? Yes. Hi, Holly. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. <laughs> this is Maddie, by the way. Where are you, Maddie? Hi. Hi. Oh, there you are. Hi. Oh, I'm going you know to put you both so I can see you both at the same time. Yeah, put it on gallery mode or whatever the hell it is. I can't remember. I tell you. You'd think after the entire pandemic, I would have this <laughs> down by now. <laughs> There's always I'm something so, new to learn. Mm -hmm. I am so zoomed out. I, I can't even tell you. I am. I, we've done so much zooming over the past year. I'm like, no. I got to get back into a theater. I got to get back into you know, a concert. Totally. So. Maddie was a teacher during the pandemic a little bit too. So she is yeah. very really? well aware. Oh, Over it. Wow. <laughs> now, if, okay, let me get, see if I got this straight. One of you is in Nashville, That's me. right? Okay. Yes. And one of you is in Arizona? Yeah. Yes, that is me. Wow. Yeah. Where? Are you roasting like I am right now? I am literally, it's like a hot box here. Yeah. So in I'm in, Pre I'm in Prescott, that I'm in Prescott, Arizona, which is in the mountains. But last week we got smacked with like Phoenix heat. So it was about 111 one day. I was born in Phoenix. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <gasps> and I do normally like heat, but this is kind of ridiculous today. It's, it's just crazy. But anyway, yeah. If I start yep, to pass definitely. out or if I start to sweat, <laughs> just go, Kevin. <laughs> Hello, wake up, sir. <laughs> well, wait, Hi, so, kids. Oh, did you do? Oh, are you also from Illinois, too? What is your IMDb says Highland Park, too? What's that about? My IMDb is, is, writ is written by a wonderful person. I have no idea. Oh, my IMDb? Yes. Or my Wikipedia? No, IMDb it says Highland oh, Park. Oh, IMDb. No, I'm not from, I'm from, uh, yeah, I live in Eagle Rock, which is right near Highland Park. Okay, yes, but perfect. no, I am not. I was, I was born in Arizona, but I've been in LA for 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Grew up in the Central Valley of California and then moved down here to go to college and just stayed. Yeah. Just started, started working and uh, just stayed. Was acting West. always what you studied? Yeah. I mean, I did. Um, yeah, I went to college, um, Cal State Fullerton, got my degree in theater. I was a, an acting. Uh, my emphasis was acting. Yeah. And graduated from there, moved into L.A. Um, and I was doing everything in college. And I moved to L.A. and didn't get a job for a year. And that was like, oh, oh my but God. I did get a job. Well, and a year is a I, short time, I feel, it honestly. Is short time. Mm -hmm. It is a short time. And, and in between jobs, you know, I did what so many guys do or actors do. I was bartending, you know, waiting tables. And then I fortunately had this great place I was working at that if I booked a job, they were like, great, go, you know, go yeah. we'll see you when you're, when you're done. So I could go do regional theater or I could go do you know, a movie or whatever. And, um, but just slowly, you know, it started mostly in theater and then slowly it kind of, you know, I get some co-star parts and then some, finally some guest star and then recurring and then, you know, and now you're here. And all that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and here I am. End this, goal is was always for this, <laughs> this is the highlight. This is why I did all that work for 30 years. Yes, yes you exactly. Are at the podcast <laughs> world. Park okay. pals. <laughs> Not park enemies, it's park pals. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Therapy oh thrown in. I've been listening to you guys. Oh, Stop thank it. you. No That's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's great. I heard, I just uh, last week listened to Jay, Jay Jackson. <gasps> Great oh my gosh, wasn't that so fun? He's, He's the so best. I've, he... seen, I've seen him sing and perform a few times, actually. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah. I see him him posting all the stuff, uh, you know, all his concerts and everything that he does. I'm so excited for him. That's amazing. After after talking to him, you're going to be real disappointed with me because he like does 500 million things. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. No, we all, we're very excited to talk to you. Yes. But also, Jay is like an enigma, man. Like, I have no idea how he does literally every single thing. Literally. And literally. he's like bored, I feel almost, because he's like, I've got, I'm not even bored. It's just like, he loves learning mm-hmm. is the thing. Well, what you he said what I mean? was true, which is I had my career as a, a, as a broadcaster, as mm-hmm. a news reporter, and now I got money in the bank and I can do what I want to do now, which is oh, yeah. right. kind of the ultimate totally. goal, isn't it, for all of us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Definitely. amazing. Oh, my gosh. But, I love it's interesting that. because he came from that end and I came from the acting world because he was like, oh, I don't know anything about this acting world. And I'm like, that's all I've done for the past you know, 30 years. <laughs> right. Let me show you a little bit. <laughs> 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 well, speaking of which, OK, so my first question for everybody is obviously yes. uh, if you've been listening, you know, how did you come to Parks and Rec? Was it through your agent or what was it through? through my did agent? you get an eco cast on Actors Access? <laughs> oh, God, no. This is <laughs> eco cast was not even a. a, a I know. I was gonna say that. Like, is that even a thing? In fact, I'm in. I'm in my living room today because my office, where I normally do my cameos and stuff, is so filled with equipment right now because of the self tapes and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. There's lights and sticks. That's and- what that is. <laughs> I've got lights go. up here. Uh, yes, uh, my agent called, and um, I had an audition for this. I went into the casting director's office. Did my scene? It was the. It was. Um, it was from practice date. It was the press conference. It was the. You know, I. I the, the, in the caves with, you know, yeah. in Brazil and all that. <laughs> so it was that whole speech. It was just me doing the speech, and uh, the wonderful casting director said that was hilarious, and they sent it off to the powers that be. And then a couple mm-hmm. of days later, I got a call back. A producer, what they call a producer's session. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, in the waiting room for that at Radford, which I know Jay told you is where we used to shoot, CBS Radford. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was there and waiting to go in. And I'm looking at, which is always deadly for an actor, I'm looking at my competition. I know. And there's like name, the I'm like, I, oh my God, this guy's had a series. This guy works all the time. It was like name, like name actors. I'm like, there's no way. Or it wasn't that, but so I thought, well, what the hell? So I go yeah, in, yeah. I go in and it's, um, it was, um, let me see if I remember who was in the, Mike, Mike was in the room. Okay. So was uh, Alex Hardcastle who directed my first episode. Yes. They were in there. And I did the speech and um, they were, <laughs> they were laughing a lot. But Yay. I, and I walked out of there and thought that went really, really well, but Here's another actor as I'm walking out that's going in after me that's had at least 10 series. And I mm-hmm. thought, well, you know, I did my best. And I got the role. Yeah. And I think I know why I got the role. This is my own little theory. Uh, it was one line that I interpreted very differently because I thought it was really funny and I thought it was really different. And that is, um, I was making love to a beautiful woman and her boyfriend and the third person whose name I never learned. <laughs> As if to say, if I didn't know the name, then I shouldn't be held accountable for this. Oh, right, 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 right. I it's never not my name. fault that I slept with that person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when Dean and Alex like were like, blah, <laughs> that's hilarious. So yeah. I think that might have been a little extra something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I never talked to Dean about it if it was, but... I always kind of thought it was because yeah, it's kind of a that's amazing. Thing. Well, and also, I mean, I feel like they're really good at trying to pick people that are to build out this town. And I feel like if there was like a series regular that could have been recognized, maybe on something else, like it just would have taken you out of it. I also you know think because ta- they at the at the time, I don't know if they even knew I was coming back, but um, I think there is an element of that. And also, it could have been a money situation if they were working with somebody mm-hmm. who was established. They might have had to pay them more. And I True, know, I you know, this that. was at mm-hmm. the beginning of season two. So they might have still been trying to hold on. I don't know. I have no idea. I have not. These comments are not confirmed <laughs> by Michael Score Incorporated. Oh, right. Exactly. They're <laughs> not I, part uh, of the Sherverse. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. And it couldn't oh happen. My gosh. A nicer guy. There isn't one. He really is. Oh, my wow. gosh. That's amazing. Yeah, Who so else anyway. was? So it was Dean. It was it was Dean, as in Dean Holland, the uh, editor guy and producer. Yeah, I worked with Dean okay. uh, 
to skip ahead, I, I work with Dean a lot. Yeah. Um, what a, what a great guy. Kevin, Just, can I please tell you, he is on like my short list. I need to talk to him. <laughs> He Eventually. Great, He's so busy. Great guy. I mean, look, guys, I, I wish I could give you some scuttlebutt, but everybody on that show was phenomenal. I mean, just mm. amazing. But anyway, going back, so I got the one. It was a one and done. It was just a one, one-time guest star. Uh, I went and did it at Radford. And it was in, some, in front of some office building. Mm -hmm. And it was getting great reaction. And... Um, and then a few weeks later, I get a call from my agent saying they want to bring you back for Christmas Scandal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I get the script and I go, oh, crap. This is <laughs> huge. This is like a yeah. big episode. Huge role. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's huge. So I was very, very thrilled to say the least. Uh, a, to get asked back and B, to have this incredible guest star with such funny, funny writing which is across the board, by the way. And Jay said the same thing. Unbelievable writers on this show. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. So good. Oh my gosh. And so smart and fast. Yeah. And the interesting thing was I watched, we watched season one mm -hmm. and I liked it. I liked it, yeah. but I wanted to love it. Season right. one. It was just, it was, it knew what it kind of wanted to be, mm -hmm. but I think not because I was on season two, but I think season two, they really started to find those defined characters. Yes. Because season one was kind of like, almost like a half season. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And also like on the DVDs, it was like Tom was uh, there, Leslie and Anne. It was like those three were the main characters. But right. then in season two, we start getting more of an ensemble to come with it, I feel. And that is really what builds not only the Parks Department, right. but the whole Pawnee community. You right. know what I mean? And then yeah. you're a big part of that as well. And then having all these other townspeople that just come back yeah. to create this. It's like, it's phenomenal the way that right. it, it grew into this. And I didn't think about that at the time. I thought, well, I thought I was just one and done, but you know, um, yeah. to facilitate the storyline of them trying to find out dirt about each other, you know, which, which was set off from from me. And, and that was the right. that was the episode at the very end where I got my catchphrase, which is, "I have no plans to resign." That's the very first. <laughs> right. So that's amazing. So anyway, so I go back to do uh, this other episode. I get to go to the table read, which is a huge thing. Big deal. Oh, big deal. And, uh, and with Amy F. and Polar, that's where most of your scenes were with, or who most of your scenes were with. It blows my mind. Well, let me just talk about Amy Polar for a minute because yes. I cannot say enough about, she set the tone on that show. I'm sure you've heard this from everyone. She set the tone on that show and it was, it was I call it, it was a family. It was like mm -hmm. a family. Whenever mm -hmm. I could go back, whatever season it was, I was welcomed. We were goofing around. That Aww. woman is, I mean, the entire cast was great, but it was, the tone was set with Amy. She mm -hmm. set up that tone and that is very rare on shows. I've had a couple yeah. of other experiences with, with that. Uh, but Amy really set a positive, great, fun tone and it showed and everyone, that's why you got people's best work. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was definitely. so collaborative. I'll tell you right. stories about the improv stuff, which is just unbelievable. But, um, yeah, so I did. Yeah, she talks about that in her book too, where how Mike Sure, when they were on SNL together, he said, you know, it's either Amy Poehler or Bust, and like he's not going to do the show without her. And then she just continues on to say that it was the best role ever written for her because it was also so similar to her personality as Amy Poehler too. Like yeah. Leslie and Amy are very interchangeable in it's some true. regards, it's true. Yeah. yeah, which is amazing. So yeah, she, yeah. Is, she is kind. She's giving. She's wonderful. Um, she, she does credit. everything on that show. Produces, directs, yes, acts, really everything. Is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I got back. Uh, so I was back and doing this, you know, doing this scene in the restaurant with Amy. And I was like, I was, I was letter, -ed, comma, perfect on my script. I knew every line. In fact, at one point when we'd been shooting for a couple of days, Nick and uh, uh, Paul Schneider, who actually was on the first two seasons, who I worked with mm -hmm. in season two. They were like, so we hear you're like, you know, Nick is like, well, so we hear uh, you're like, uh, really <laughs> exceptional. You know, you ever know every every line and doing a really, you know, really great job. Well done. Well done, sir. Whatever. I guess, you know, so right. Hold him. So Paul Schneider nice is Mark, by the way, for the listeners. That's right. It was Mark. Right. In the first. That's right. Anyway, that, and, was, and, that, was, yeah. not, that was nice to hear. 
<laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, Nick Offerman telling you that you're like on your game. Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, what yeah. A dream. But it's great because when we did the scene in the restaurant, what they used to do in the first couple of seasons, I, they didn't really continue on with this. What they used to do is they used to hide the cameras, mm. like they put them behind some blinds, or they'd have one camera that was hiding behind a big plant in the mm. restaurant and in the apartment when we were doing uh, Christmas candles. So you couldn't really see the cameras, which made it really like eavesdropping. It was really cool yes. for actors to just kind of do a scene with, with one, with another person. And not, yeah. like, you know, you couldn't really see the crew. There was crew around, but it was really sure. kind of cool. I don't, they didn't continue on with that, but it was really, really awesome. Oh yeah. Like all those spy shots, like you wouldn't have yeah, done, I don't feel shots. like you would have done the same thing without, with seeing the yeah. camera, you yeah. know, it's yeah. a whole yeah. other vibe. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I first worked with Randall Einhorn who directed that episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maddie, yes. Yes. And Randall <laughs> Maddie lifted her hands up. <laughs> Randall ended up uh Randall's a good friend and Randall ended up we have worked together a bunch of times. In fact, I had a two and a half year campaign for Chevy, for Chevrolet. It was called Under the Blue Arch, and it was uh six people that work at a dealership, and they were little mm. half hour or not half hour, they were little, you know, 30 second sitcoms. Yeah. About, I don't know, five, six years ago. And we did over 200 of them. And they were written by comedy writers. And they were all directed by Randall because they wanted the look of The Office and Parks and Rec for these, for these spots. Yeah. So, yeah, I got to work with him in over 200 commercials. And then oh, I did awesome. his series. Oh. He had a series, Wilfred, which I guest starred on. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that was Randall. Oh, my God. Of course Randall it created it. Show. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. the show. Yeah, of course. So that's amazing. That is amazing that I just happened to luck out and do my second episode of that show with Randall. And then he, you know, when you get somebody who believes in you and will bring you back because they know you can do what they need you to do. That's a really great feeling. So right. And who's on your team and who wants you to succeed and like sees the success that you could bring to the show. It's just like one person, like you said. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, that's like Amy. Look, what's when somebody shines, when somebody's great, whether they're a lead or not. The, mm. the better they are, the better the show is. And Amy right. I was, and Michael always was the show, was on the show and how good it could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, seeing that potential. Yeah. Um, where was that uh, diner? Like where did you, was that at Radford I too? I knew you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> I was racking my brain today to wonder what, I know where it is, uh, but for the life of me, I can't remember. It was in the valley, in the deep valley on. Okay. I think it was on Riverside Riverside Drive. Okay. I'll have to Because it comes it. back. Uh, oh, when, they use it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, because I was going through most of the episodes this morning too. And uh, Jam and Amy Poehler have a moment there as well. And I was like, where is that diner? I tried Googling it, but I couldn't find it. So I'll have to do some more research on that. <laughs> I think I may actually have my call sheet from Christmas Scandal. <gasps> wow. I oh will my get god. the name for you. Oh my god, that would be amazing. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, awesome. I actually have one of them. I was pulling one up today. This is from uh this is from what ended up being second oh my god! second chunks, which the original name was Pie in the Sky. Actually, I'm sure you may know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Yep. And this was written by Amy and Michael, and we'll get to this a little later on because right. Amy wrote this and a new scandal for Dexhart, which I'll oh. always be indebted to her for that too. Like that is enough. amazing. Well, okay, because there was a couple episodes where you're just kind of in the background. This is obviously when uh, Amy is or Leslie is now in the city council, right. and so I was going to ask, like, how did you feel about being behind the scenes? Because you didn't, re- or did they cut a lot as well? Like, what kind of were those? Yes, days they did. Like? In were fact, I was in a I was in another episode called um, uh, "Are You Better Off." Mm-hmm. And our mm-hmm. our scene is actually in the deleted scenes. Uh, uh, okay. At the end, uh, it was just a scene around the table with the the, the council people, and Amy's like ringing a bell because she, <laughs> she changed her two hundredth law or something. I forget, but it was a scene with us and Jam and Hauser. Right. But yeah, I mean, it was kind of it was kind of funky because I had this huge guest star uh, in season two, and then never heard from them for three seasons. And I thought, yeah, well, I was yeah, I was gonna ask had about a good that. run. <laughs> and then, but the thing is, is that we, my wife and I loved the show so much. We were addicted yeah. to it. So we're watching it every week. 
And when the cliffhanger was that she got elected to the city council, I went, oh, I wonder. And she was shooting. That's when I did, you know, tons of them. And it didn't matter. I mean, I, they, they were great. I always got guest star billing. I always got, you know, the, That's amazing. the same pay I'd made. And um, no matter if I had a line, didn't have a line, was in the background, had a, they gave me, you know, <laughs> they gave me a lot of great looks. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> like when they did, what was it, Article 2? And oh, yeah. the outdated Ted Party. laws was that women have to menstruate in the bathtub. And it was kind of like, hmm. <laughs> 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 they would just cut to me anything that was kind of remotely half sexual or a little bit off they would always cut to dex heart which was great yes because you were uh, reacting to all of that that's amazing <laughs> i was gonna ask too in this uh in christmas scandal and i think in a couple of them you're on the front of a tabloid and they actually call you sexy dexy <laughs> <laughs> There's a post. There's a postcard of that that some fan sent me. No like, way. In like some memorabilia store, and he's like, "I got a couple of them. Here's one for you." I was like, "What the what?" And it's just me. I have it on my desk. I should have brought it, but it's just me with the the cover of the sexy Dexy. Did they send it to you like via mail or how did? What's that? How did they send it to you? They mailed it to me. Said, "Hey, I, I got this for you. Would you mind signing an autograph?" And I was like, "Sure, absolutely." Oh yeah, they they usually send it. I get a lot of those sent to my agents or managers, you know, for people who are- Yeah. Oh my gosh, Parks and Rec fans and The Office fans, we're here with you, man. We are just here. <laughs> and I wanna, let me tell you, and, and I know Jay touched on this too. Uh, what's amazing is that the show is it's bigger than it ever was. I mean, because of Netflix, really Netflix and now Peacock, but because of Netflix, it, it, it found a whole new generation of, mm -hmm. of audiences, I think, because people that oh, totally. didn't see it the first time and had heard it was the best show on TV, Entertainment Weekly once said it's the best show on TV that no, you know, hardly anybody's watching. In fact, I'll never forget when, <laughs> and, uh, when, when I did Christmas Scandal, I was so happy. And then I started reading this stuff about oh, the, the, the top four shows that, or the, the four shows that are gonna be canceled before they even finish their second season. And right there, number two was Parks and Recreation. No. A great, a great show that nobody's watching and probably is going to get cut. And I called, I was in New York and I ran into a buddy of mine and I said, he said, how you doing? I said, well, I just shot this great guest star on Parks and Rec. He said, that's, that's a great show. I said, I know, but I hear it's going to get canceled. He's like, you know what? Calm down. It's not going to get <laughs> canceled until it gets canceled. Because I was like, my episode won't air. <laughs> <laughs> All that work for nothing. But then again, it, it caught an audience. They found this, they really found the heart in the characters. Mm -hmm. They identified all the characters very strongly. The writing just kept getting better throughout the entire show, I think. And it did not get chopped away. And thank God for all of us. <laughs> Seriously. Mm -hmm. No, we we are finding that in our research too. Maddie and I have been looking into the like the Wikipedia pages or the uh Wik Parks Wiki. There's a whole other thing where like yeah. the ratings and the viewership and stuff and all those numbers. And yeah, the first and second season, most of the second season were not rated very highly. I think the best one that we've gotten to was like the maybe the fifth episode of the second um one. And that was all but again, it's all critics and what critics yeah. say. And it's yeah. not about the mm -hmm. fans. So you know, we're learning that that doesn't really matter, but like it matters. The executives are making this decision that doesn't always. But it's funny that later sense. on, then the critics, it was a critics, the critics loved it. And it right. was always written about that it's one of the best shows that, you know, not as many people are watching that should be watching it. And then Netflix comes along after the thing's mm -hmm. done and mm -hmm. it becomes massive. And then, um, uh, and then Peacock now, but like I said, I, I, I cannot even tell you. And I played Dexart. I mean, I was only on 14, 15 episodes, which mm -hmm. is a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. But <laughs> uh, I have been, especially before the pandemic, we were all wearing masks. Nobody could right. recognize anybody. But uh, not a day went by without being, at, you know, Trader Joe, a grocery store, or the, you know, the post office, whatever. Excuse yeah. me, are you at the gym? You know, and then what really got surreal was when it, started playing in Europe and we've been, we were in um, Ireland and Scotland uh, a couple of years ago and people there, it was unbelievable coming up to me all the time. Incredible. Wow. I mean, just incredible how many people love, and they're like, Oh yeah, I've watched, I'm on my 10th 
watching the whole thing 10 times. Yeah. There's other people like 10 times. That's like, like wussy. You know, I'm on my 24th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. How dare course, they it's, it's only got, 10 a, times. It's got a lot of heart. It's got a lot of heart and it's really funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you find that people think that you are Dex Heart? Like, are they treating you this way or are they more so just excited? They're really excited. Okay. They just are really, they're like, they're just really excited. They'll come up and I'm, you know, I'm picking corn from the bin and they're, <laughs> excuse me, I, I don't mean to, you know, you were right. so great on that. Was it fan, Was it great work? Yes, it was amazing. And oh, it's so great. Anyway, so nice to hear. And it's funny because they don't, people don't want autographs much anymore. They want selfies is kind of mm-hmm. what everybody wants the selfie now. So mm-hmm. that's very, very sweet. And all, do you do all that? Is, because I feel like it might be like invasive after a while to be like, oh God, do I have to No, do not. It's, look, it's when they stop asking that I start to worry. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm actually not kidding. It's, it's part of the business, but I'm not mm-hmm. Tom Hanks. You know, I can walk around and I'll, I'll get somebody going, hey, Dex Hart or right. Or I, actually <laughs> the best was, there was somebody I was working out at the Y, the Y here. And uh, uh-huh. every time I'd walk in, the woman that would check the cards, I'd walk in. She'd always go, Councilman. <laughs> Councilman. <laughs> How are you? Councilman. That's awesome. Every, every time I went in. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, and speaking of calling you councilman, uh, I think in, I was rewatching the first episode and they said Bill Dexhart. And I was like, oh my God, is his first name Bill? Bill. <laughs> so they always call you Dexhart. Bill. Yeah, Bill. <laughs> In fact, yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. When, yeah. Again, back to Amy. Mm-hmm. Uh, being so generous with giving other people a spotlight. We did, I think Jay told you about the fun runs. You probably know about the fun runs. And mm-hmm, it would mm-hmm. always be that we would, you know, the scene as written several times. And then, kind of, then they would kind of loosen it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then the last one was the fun run, which was completely improvised. And I would sit there. I, I would sit there because I, I I went to uh, Improv Olympic. I yeah, I, I oh studied, my gosh, me too. IOS or in Chicago? Uh, West, West. <gasps> me yeah. too. Oh, you did? R.I.P. 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 Yes, okay. I did for for yeah. a brief stint. I was there. Uh, I would took classes there and did shows for like two years, maybe never on a house team or anything like that. Uh-huh. But yeah, I love Iowa West. Did them, and that's where Amy started, as you know. And then she bro- in Chicago, and then she broke up and started Upright. Mm-hmm. And um, so, oh yeah, so improv. So I was sitting, I'd done improv Olympic, but I'm like, I'd watched, you know, John Glazer and Amy going at it in the chambers. It was like, I'd get one or two zing, I'd get one or two lines in and I just, I sat back. I mean, I just like, I'm just gonna watch this volleyball, you know, thing back yes. and forth. It's <laughs> unbelievable how quick and how fast, Pratt too, unbelievable. Um, but, um, that's insane. Yeah. yeah. So, but in, in terms of Amy being collaborative, there's a scene where, uh, we're around the table talking about, um, voting, voting rules and all this sort of thing. I forget which, uh, I forget which episode it was. Anyway, we're talking about, and at one point Hauser agrees with Leslie and she goes, Oh, wow. And she spills the coffee all, yeah. all Hauser. And I was just so happy that you agree with me. So in, <laughs> And yeah, I get to get really excited when you like me. Is her like? <laughs> yeah, I, I was just, I guess, I really like, exactly. Yeah. So we did a take, and I'm so we're really excited when you like me. And there was this dead spot, and I said, Leslie, you can spill coffee in my lap anytime. You can spill <laughs> coffee in my lap. And she said, oh, my God, that is hilarious. She brings the writer over. She says, let's add this to the scene. Let's add it to the scene. They ended up cutting it because they cut a lot of the improv stuff. But we filmed it a couple of times where I say, you can spill coffee in my lap. And she said, not now, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Leslie. That is yeah. so not good. Not now, Bill. Oh, name's my God. Bill, right? Isn't your first name Bill? Yeah, Bill, yeah. Bill Dexar. Right. Oh, That's my great. God. That's oh amazing. <laughs> yeah, she, Maddie, was, did that, you have something you were going to say? I'm sorry. No, that oh. was just very encouraged. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Maddie. Oh, no, you're good. You keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you have a glowing light behind you that makes you almost look other ethereal nice. yes i it's, like it it's that lovely time of day when i can't get the sun out of my apartment if i try <laughs> a million different things and so it's gonna get hot in the apartment <laughs> oh my god yeah but that's what dexar would say uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. um but in terms of uh improving, uh there was there was quite a bit and again not a lot of it was kept because the writing was so good 
But once mm-hmm. in a while, you get a nugget. I added at the end of uh, when she says, you know what, councilman, you're a class act. And I went, thank you. <laughs> right. Like because you're actually taking like, that yeah, as a compliment. You really I really am. You know, exactly. Just, nothing, nothing phases him. Yeah. Oh my God. No, you play it so well where it's like everything you respond to is so genuine. Like I truly <laughs> believe you're saying that about me. And mm-hmm. like, he, he really doesn't see that all the stuff he's doing is that bad. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You, exactly. The way you and, play and, and it. And the more so outrageous great. he gets, the more outrageous he gets, the more popular he gets. He keeps, keeps getting reelected. You can't run against this guy because he'll always get reelected. Yep. He's walking down the hallway and says, you know, Leslie, sweet <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and she's like he's kind of cute i could fix him yeah. oh gosh <laughs> Shana, no. Actually, there was another improv moment that they didn't use i wish they had where she goes i said sweet jug she goes hi billy <laughs> oh my god billy Bill, hi billy and it's yes. like, oh uh, no come on she's like well he's kind of cute i think i can help i think i can save him you know yeah I can change <laughs> that him. <laughs> that worked out so well because that is right around the time when Shauna starts getting very like needy and kind of like she's a little bit crazy kind of mm-hmm. um, just yeah, very so. insecure about herself. So yeah. <laughs> with that involvement yeah. because she didn't start like that. I mean, she did a little bit, I guess, when she sleeps with Mark. But like, you know, it wasn't real. I didn't take that as like her insecurity level that she gets to be almost like when yeah. she gets to Valentine's Day. We're like, OK, yes. So <laughs> you guys reacting together. That must have been so fun. But he oh just my God. does it. But he just does it. So- so matter of fact, like this is what you do in the hallway. It's just what you right. do. Right, 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 exactly. Did you know that um, your first episode when we were researching it, uh, Practice Date, yeah. uh, that was based, your character, Dexart, was based off of Mark, a real thing. Mark Sanford. A real uh, Sanford, uh, Mark, Mark, yes. Mark, Mark Sanford, right? Yeah. The, I think so. I think you're right about yeah, that. I don't the, have his uh, name pulled the up. Guy yeah. that, the guy, the reason that the writers told me they wrote it because he was in all over the press. He just, yep. he just, he's still in politics, by the way. He right. just disappeared. He just disappeared. Nobody. And then he was going to run for. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. His staff couldn't find him. His family couldn't find him. Nobody could find him. And he was with his mistress down in like Venezuela or so. I don't know where. It yeah. Was. yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, it was somewhere in South America. I can't so that's remember. why they had him, you know, having sex, you know, four-way sex in a, in a cave. cave in Brazil. <laughs> right. And saying you were working right. houses, you know, but building houses for the homeless when in fact you you were in a cave having yeah. Exactly. And then he was going to run for 2020 president, but then he dropped out. And I think he was all supported by Trump and everything. But it was really fascinating to me because as we're learning and researching the show, we're learning, especially in season one, but throughout the show, for sure. It just it's all based on real things yeah. in the political yeah. world. And yeah. the fact is that bad people uh, defeat good people all of the time, as uh, Jen Barkley says. Yes. And so it's just really funny to have that satire of you coming in as the character and making you know, light and fun about it, Plus even though it's so true. You can't make this stuff up. Right. No. Why, <laughs> so why make it up when you can just turn on CNN and write <laughs> write something that based on that? Yeah. Yes. Especially after certain incidents. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, Not what are we? Any yeah. names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we got we know you. Where you're going? No, <laughs> we feel you. That's all good. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's totally uh, interesting to me, too, when you were saying, like, he says everything so matter of fact. Um, did you have, like, any direction that they gave you, or did you kind of come in with this kind of, like, newscaster councilman voice? Like, was that something that you already decided when you got on set? Yeah. I mean, I think, yes. Uh, you yeah. know, he was, he's, he's just very sure of himself. Yeah. He's very sure. And as he says, I'm very good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm very good. Uh, do you want, you know, you, should we? I mean, people are thinking, yeah. you know what, you got nothing to lose. Oh, right. I'm, I'm very good. I really am. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that whole cadence is so hilarious. And we ended oh. that that whole ending because Randall was so, you know, we would just push it as much as we could. And it, it would just, it got to the point where it was like, if I get out of here, all right, I'm I'm leaving. I mean, this is okay. it. Your last chance. Go. Oh, right. All right. <laughs> if, I, if I walk in from the carpet onto this wood floor, I'm gone. I'm out. So oh, my God. take advantage now because... <laughs> And yeah, I love, that. And I love that I'm doing two different maternity wards. <laughs> I forgot and then you about have the birthday that. for like all eight of your kids That's and all the. That's hilarious. I forgot because Jim, Jim's up. I I keep in touch with Jim O'Hare too. Oh uh, great! Yeah, Jim's so awesome. That's a big episode for him too. It was, mm-hmm. and uh, I just love that. And um, yeah, I just I have no whose birthday. I have no idea. I just, I just, I've got so many kids with so many different women. I just have one birthday <laughs> here, and and all the women are like you. Oh, 
Oh my god, the part where they're all staring <laughs> daggers at you and then you wave at them is hilarious. You know, so one of good. the things I get asked uh, to do a lot on Cameo, which we mm. can talk about later, but yeah, you know, where they want the personal messages, they'll say, my wife or a friend of ours is having a baby. Do you have any fatherly advice, <laughs> advice about being a father? <laughs> so, That's amazing. I do a whole um, thing. That is so, what do you say to that? <laughs> Oh, I make a, I, so I, first of all, Cameo is amazing because you really get to get these messages. And now I'm on Memo. Have you heard about Memo? No, mm -hmm. that's, that's new the for me. European and Canadian version of, so now I'm doing them for people in, in England and Wales. I did one in, wow. for Wales the other day. It's yeah. Crazy. But anyway, that is crazy. Uh, most people want, uh, most people want it, me to do it as Dex Hart which I okay. normally do. I always say I'm Kevin Simons, you know, uh, this is Bill Dexhart uh, coming from my compound and outside of Pawnee. Some right. people also call me Kevin Simons, blah, blah, I go into something about that, but then I, I do it as, as Dexhart. But I, they give me as much as they can, and I, I don't write anything down. I improv the entire thing for three and a half minutes. And it's, mm. just, not only is it, fun it's great for my improv chops and oh, these totally. people just eat it up and the more they give me you know and they want you know i'll include the husband is was my travel agent that booked my you know caves in brazil and you know, <laughs> one guy was my my you know i want him to be my uh, campaign manager and you know it's just oh, right this, just crazy stuff and some of them are what they want are they're so so funny and it just gives me a chance to really go nuts and I, I really love it. I, I've, put all, I've put a lot of them on my YouTube channel, the Kevin Simons mm. channel, just so people can see them. Yeah, see the kinds of things that you do and can request something else or something similar or whatever. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, and Cameo has really just become, it's just exploded. I mean, there's so mm -hmm. many people on that now. Um, and it's Oh my gosh, broke. everybody is on there. It's amazing. That's how I got Jay. Yeah, that's right. That's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally yeah. how I got him. I like yeah. messaged well, him and I was like, it's the best money I've ever spent. In my yeah. life. We're yeah. like, we can pay five dollars for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> and he was so generous and kind where he just sent me his email and was like, Oh yeah, just email me. Like, we don't need to do this. <laughs> you guys, I'll knock off two dollars for you. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> right. You guys. Right. We need Count a discount, rate. please. Yes. <laughs> Well, so, okay. So we talked about Jay. I want to talk about also, you were, you worked a lot with Joan Calamazzo or Mo Collins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, especially, in, all, you, especially in uh, uh, Christmas Scandal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember where that TV station was? Because I've been trying to look up where that is. Was that on like a soundstage? It's, or it's, a, it's at Radford. It's a soundstage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. See, I didn't and, know that. And uh, actually, uh, when we're doing that and you see uh, Anne off camera. Yeah. And I see you brought your girlfriend, she says. No, she's not my girlfriend, she's just a friend. The director of the sh sitting right next to it, that's Randall Einhorn. Actually. Oh my god! Yeah, the guy with the beard and the white and the gray of hair. Of course. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Rewatching that literally. <gasps> Thank you for that right Easter egg. This. Oh my ah, gosh. <laughs> that's amazing. But, oh okay. my god, Mo is unbelievable. I, I see her a lot um, uh, periodically at parties and events and stuff for her and her husband. And um, yeah, she, that's awesome. She's just crazy she is like a killer she is such a beast at improv and character commitment i mean it's just nuts because you have she's... to be that's what oh improv is you have to no matter how where it's going you have to fully commit and mm. she yeah. goes over and above fully committing she's really amazing yeah absolutely did you actually did amy poehler actually pull her pants down mm -hmm. <laughs> when she, like when there's a mole on her yeah, butt a little bit i mean <laughs> and that was another thing i added i added the thing where dex starts looking i know i was like wait did she actually show her butt to literally everyone because i wouldn't put it past amy there Polar, was no but, butt you know, showing right. there was no butt showing she just kind of pulled down a little bit and okay yeah and i think that they had did they ha am i wrong in saying that they had a little bit of a blurred moment too i think to try to make it look yeah. like she actually to make did it look like she pulled exactly yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. okay okay <laughs> dexy's trying to get a a quick cheap thrill <laughs> oh my god that is amazing <laughs> are any of those 
Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Holly. Are any of those lines um, there? Because the three of you having the improv background when it's you and Mo and um, mm-hmm. Amy, are any of those lines improv or was that all scripted? I think when she, I, in fact, I'm almost positive when she said, it's like I'm invisible. All right. <laughs> the answer is like I'm invisible because I was, we were looking at each other and, and Amy's just pissed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you look great, sweetheart. <laughs> Uh, I think when, I think she added, it's like I'm invisible. I think that was hers. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. A little button. We like to get our, us actors like to get our little buttons in. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Just to try it. Me, they thank can always... you. It was mine. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can always cut it afterwards. Oh you yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. And like Which I said, is... they did a lot and, and um, there was a lot of stuff. And I think one of the few that actually made it in. I wasn't in the scene, but uh, I remember seeing this and just dying. And it just shows you how funny Pratt is. Mm. Um, when he said, uh, um, Leslie, I typed in your symptoms into this bar here and it says you have network connect- tech, you may have network connectivity problems. Right. That is That's such improv. a famous improv line. Yeah. I think I um, there's a writer that came out and said, this guy makes me hate my job oh because, it was Mike sure yeah because he's like said, when he said when was, the guy can improv better yeah he said i, I was yeah. i kept it because it was so brilliant but i was so pissed off that i didn't think of it right yeah exactly <laughs> they were at the paley fest i remember that interview and I was they there. were talking oh okay yeah. nice oh nice yeah and he was like what like I am writing and busting my ass to try to come up with something. And then this guy just comes up with something off the top of his head. <laughs> yeah, I was, at, I, was at, I was at the Paley Fest uh, that evening. I was in the audience. And um, oh, oh that's so that, cool. that was a madhouse. I, that was the moment I really realized that this show had just exploded. I mean, I was in the lobby before the thing. And it was just like, I wasn't mobbed. But I mean, people were just coming up right, yeah, and, left, right and left and right and left. And then we had the party afterwards, which I think Jay touched on. And you know, I hadn't seen these guys in a while. And it, again, it just shows you how wonderful they are. I mean, Amy, I was talking with, with uh, Amy and Rashida, ran them as they were you know, in one of the rooms and I came out, we, we chatted for the longest time, just so lovingly. And then Chris comes around and I said, Chris, uh, Kevin Simon's Dex Hard. The guy gives me a bear hug. The Aww. biggest freaking movie star in America. And the guy's like, oh man, it's so good to see you. How are you, buddy? You know, that sort of thing. So that's so sweet. Genuine, genuine, genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, um, same with Aubrey, everybody. Just really, really great. It was great to see everybody because R- Randall was there, Dean was there. I talked to Amazing. Dean for a long time. He's such a great guy and he's done so well. He had his hands on everything in on that show. Oh my god! And, uh, and him and um, him and Morgan Sackett also. Yeah. Very, very, yeah, very, very. Yeah, Morgan Sackett is one of the ones that's in the wall of black and white pictures of men uh, for council members. Yeah. They actually show him like in Girls Club in the first season, <laughs> and so he had a little cameo, which I thought I was, was really hilarious. I love doing that. They brought me in. They brought me in for a photo shoot. Oh, nice. They did the hair and the whole bit. I was a whole, they brought me in just for like one hour to do the photo shoot to have my, I have a picture of it somewhere on my phone, right? Was uh, like, your councilman picture. That's right. Absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> did you have to do a separate photo for the newspaper or did they just take that from the shot? I took that from a shot. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure where they got that from, but uh, that was really, really funny. That is so crazy. Really oh, oh my gosh. Okay. And, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay, because I was going to move on to the filibuster episode because that's yes. one of my most favorite ones that you're in. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was, first of all, there's a gong, there's a margarita machine, she's on roller skates, like so many so things. So much is happening. <laughs> it, is, uh, it was, yes, it was like watching a whirling dervish. She was just, uh, it was, it was so, so funny. And that was a, a, a co-written by Harris, by the way, who mm-hmm. very sad to hear about him i saw him do stand-up actually he um i went to see uh nick do his one-man show at largo which is a club here in los angeles where a lot of those guys perform Mm -hmm. uh from the show and um he was he did he opened for nick doing stand-up that's amazing and uh, and then not long after where he was he was gone and he wrote i think he wrote co-wrote a good majority of the episodes i did 
A lot well, of them. Yeah, and he also lot. story edited a lot of them as well. It so was in the show as one of the, yeah. the, the animal control guys. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. That's yes. him. That's Harris. But yes, filibuster was uh, a just hilarious where she was, wasn't she supposed to be, he was, he threw a party for her, right? And she couldn't. Uh, yeah, so she was throwing a roller skating party for right, Ben, right. and then it, right. yeah, Jam un, untabled the meeting on voting. Yeah. That was the episode with the coffee because she yes, was right. like, "I vote we table right. this so that <laughs> so that we can, you know, because they're trying to get the uh, Eagleton people to not right. vote in yeah. the next mm-hmm. election for council That's right. members." That's right. That was the coffee scene. That's right. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the reason. Speaking of speaking of filibusters, I was there when Patton. Did his fifteen or whatever it was eight oh, yeah. nine minute My the thing about the J.J. Abrams uh, yes. uh, Star Wars, which I nobody knew he was going to go. Oh my god! Because and he improvised that whole thing, right? Like the whole thing. He oh never my gosh. stopped talking. And while he was talking, the directors running around going, "Get up!" And or first, first look bored, look bored. So we're all saying, you know, uh, okay, now just get up and start leaving. Just walk away. And so we were all just like. Yeah, you know, and then, and then for then for a while, look interested, and then and it was, I it was it was jaw dropping. I it's I think it's online somewhere. I, I it is. I yeah, it's on YouTube yeah. for sure. <laughs> I watched it. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, it was, <laughs> and I love him, and he is mm-hmm. the, another incredibly nice guy. I caught up with him at the Paley Fest. We used to shop together over here at. The, I used to run into him at the local pavilions over here in Burbank all the time. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Because I've loved his stand-up comedy for years. Oh yeah. Um, I know, but, I always try to tell people that are Parks and Rec fans, like the, a lot of people of the co-stars on there are like amazing improvisers and stand-up performers and have yeah. specials that no one's ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, don't sleep on these people. Like go watch them. Like Jenny Slate, oh my gosh, all yeah. of those. Ben I Schwartz, they have her. stand-up specials and things. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just so like, but, And it's amazing that they're getting this recognition through Parks and Rec, but I'm just oh, like, yeah. but go watch their actual like stand-up shit. Like it's so good. Oh, and mm. improv stuff. Like that's what Ben is doing at large. Largo. He's playing Largo in like a week or so. He's doing oh, wow. a Ben Schwartz and Friends. Yeah. So and, and Patton's going to be there, too. He's doing Patton Oswalt and Friends. So <gasps> it's a great place to go down and check check people out, trying new stuff or um, yeah. Collins is there all the time. So that's that's really a hoot. For those of you visiting Los Angeles, go to <laughs> Largo, <laughs> La Cienega. <laughs> I will. Tell, I haven't been there. I lived in LA for about five years, and I never got a chance to go down there. So I gotta make a special trip to go. I'll yeah, go with you. That you sounds like a blast. Yeah. Yes, Maddie and I will go. And I and you guys went to Berkeley School of Music. La di da. I was actually. <laughs> I was. I was a music major my first uh, year and a half of college. Oh wow! That's what was awesome. your concentration like? What'd you play? Opera performance, choral directing. Ooh, dang! Wow. That Did was you not what I would to get to that part. Well, I had done. I was always in the chamber groups when in high school. All my choirs. I'm a singer, and okay. then I started getting into musicals. That's that's what got me into theater. Was I was a painfully shy child. Painfully, like mm. I had like two friends. I was very introverted, and then I got cast in the pajama game uh, in high school. In the comedy role, and I was scared to death. But my choral teacher. Uh, said you need to audition for this and I did and I got cast and all of a sudden when I was on that stage and my pants fell down and the whole audience <laughs> laughed because that was the bit that was supposed to happen I was like oh this is great oh and all of a sudden <laughs> I had two people who knew me and overnight it was like everybody knew me I was like this is a burst out of my my shell oh my gosh I, I got bitten and that was it and then I just you know get <sighs> Oh my gosh! Yes, theater brings people so far out of where they would have been b- before. I went in as a music major, but I'll tell you what killed me was music theory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it kills everybody. The mathematics <laughs> of music—it was just—it was so flipping hard for me. So it is really hard. It was hard for me too. I mean, there are like I would say there's probably like ten percent of people who are really good at it, and mm. it just comes naturally. And most of those people are piano players. Um, yeah. That's why I say that every single musician including vocalists because yeah. vocalists are musicians too should know how to play the piano or at least know the notes well, on a piano I mean I'm not a person at all that like can just sight read and you know but it's very important and Berkeley like didn't have that was something I was like 
a little mad about and had to fight to get into a piano, a keyboard class, because it wasn't required for every single major. Sure. Um, and I get it because it's Berkeley and a lot of it's performance and you're doing so many other things. So like, I totally get it, but I feel like it should be required to learn how to play. I had to. I had lesson. to. When I was, I was or a, one class. I was opera performance major. I had to take piano classes. I had yeah. to. That's good. Yeah. You should have to be able to, or like, I shouldn't have had to fight to get in. I don't remember a yeah. dang thing, but. <laughs> <laughs> but while you're studying a music education, yeah. that is yeah. the only instrument that you can see everything visually. And it's yeah. so important. 100%. But, uh, but yeah, I did love Berkeley though. I don't, I didn't mean to drag Berkeley, but. <laughs> no. Well, I'll tell you like music theory wise, like I, I'm a classically trained violinist. So I've been doing theory since I was five. Oh and God. still getting there. The traditional theory made sense to me, but you get into the jazz theory and it's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I've been told all these rules. Why did they not apply now here? You throw them out the window because it's jazz. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. it's it's a it's a level of yeah. So I always think about Angela Kinsey's line in the office where she's like, yeah, just jazz, play the right notes. That's right. <laughs> jazz is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what that's when I changed majors because I was already doing so much theater at, Cal, at the, my in my college uh, college mm -hmm. and I just was a non major and so I um I cha I officially changed majors after about a year and year and a half and um, never where was that back. again Cal State Fullerton you said Fullerton yeah I was accepted at UCLA but I want I was I wanted to be on the main stage as yeah. an undergraduate and they to get on the main stage you really kind of had to be a grad student so i just because mm. at the time i wasn't a theater major so i went to cal state fullerton because my choral directing teacher had gone to cal state fullerton ah. i got accepted there and at, actually they have a fantastic uh theater program there absolutely fantastic and ironically it was the right choice because um my one of my main mentor uh, professors there who directed a lot of the shows that I did, especially mm -hmm. is his name was Don Finn and his wife was Mally Finn, who was she's passed now, but uh, she was probably the number one or number two casting director in town in Los oh. Angeles. OK, she cast all of James Cameron's films. In fact, she cast me in my first movie, Terminator 2. Oh, wow. And she, um, she took me under her wing and God bless her again, like, like, um, uh, you know, Amy and a couple of the people, on uh, um, Randall Einhorn. Mm -hmm. And she cast me in several things when I was just getting started, just out of college. I didn't even have an agent and yeah. she got me work. And I wow. will always be grateful for her because she helped my resume early on just out of college. Mm -hmm. And that's because she had seen every show I had done in college and was like, this kid's good. He just needs to, because at the time they didn't teach you how to act for TV and film. So I go into audition for this, for some role I didn't get. Mm -hmm. And I read for it and just in her office, just her and I, and talk about somebody that believes in you. She, I did the scene and she goes, that was really great for the stage version. Now we're going to try it for the film version. So I want you to bring everything way down. And that's where I got my very first lesson, the difference between the theater acting and, and TV film acting. Yeah, it's a completely different world. And people who aren't actors like don't really understand it. Because, of course, you wouldn't really be thinking about that. But when theater, you're acting for the whole audience, yeah. you know, and you're trying to go to the back of the, the last row. But with TV right. film, all you got to worry about is your scene partner. And it's, like, really hard. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's all in there. It's all in the face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. That's amazing, though, that you got to actually talk to an actual casting director about it, too, because so many people are in classes that, like, you know, might not get that same uh, atmosphere or environment as being in the room with the, Again, with the CD. Again, uh, one you know? of those many, many things that happen throughout your career. There's a lot of bad, but believe me, there's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of, you got to learn to love the word no. It's the first yep. thing I tell anyone. You got to lear learn to love it, and it's got to roll off your back like, mm -hmm. you know, like a duck. You just mm -hmm. cannot hold on to it or you will drive you or you, it's not the business for you. Right. And even as I've been doing this for a long time and I still get down in the dump sometimes if something doesn't work out or whatever, but then you get people like Mally and, 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 and you get onto a show like Parks and Recreation. It just changes your whole life mm -hmm. for the better. 
Mm. Right. And I've gotten other roles because of Parks and Rec. And I've been recognized for the, I remember when I got the, the show I did after Parks was done, I did a Disney series. I was the dad on a Disney series called Best Friends Whenever. Yeah, I just sent Maddie a clip of that this morning. Yeah, I played Norm. Uh-huh. Norm Marcus. And the, the, the dad. <laughs> of course, I play a lot of dads. Uh, I, play, I play a lot of dads. It's ironic because I played such a sex pervert on Parks and Recreation. <laughs> right. I, know, I was thinking that. <laughs> so I get cast on this as the dad on the show, and uh, I walk in to, uh, for the first day, and all the kids that are playing my kids and the neighbor's kids, they all go, oh, my God. Are you playing Norm? I said, Yes. Guys, guys, Councilman Dexhart is playing Norm. <gasps> all no. went nuts. Awesome. And then I found out that the guys who created the show, like their favorite show was Parks and Recreation. And they were like, when I walked in, they were, we can have Dexhart as, as Norm? This is unbelievable. Because the two, the two girls that played the best friends, one was an Ann and one was a Leslie. There you go. That's what they, that's, that's our what story. They yes. That's, that's your story. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How was, uh, where, was that in front of a live audience? Best no, friends whenever? No, that was, uh, that was, you know, a block and shoot. No audience. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So they got a little bit of a laugh track. Just a lot. Well, yeah, it was a laugh track on the show and, um, all of these Disney shows, I've done a ton of Disney shows, Nickelodeon shows. I've been recurring mm-hmm. on a bunch and had other ones. They, the uh, producers and the writers, they're in there and they, they'll go, ha, 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 you know, they'll, they'll laugh. They'll add it. Where the laugh yeah. is supposed to be. Sure. So, you know. so that you get some like real reaction to it. Right. You know? And you know where to pause and then when to continue on and all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah okay. That's really cool because then you can kind of combine like TV, film and theater together. I always right. think about that with studio audiences, you know? Right. Well, again, that's true because I mean, you know, let's face it. I'm sure you've seen your share of Disney shows, Nickelodeon shows and, you know, they ain't subtle. You know, they're, <laughs> right. they're, they're, they're pretty big. They're pretty broad. Whereas you get, right. you, know, you get Parks and Rec. Very over like, the top and campy I'm kind a re- of. Donna, I'm a really big fan of your writing. A really <laughs> big fan. You know, <laughs> very intimate. You you yeah. get what he's saying, you know. yeah. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Did you guys um drink any of those margaritas in the filibuster episode? Do you remember? Was that like a real thing? It was a real thing if you like to drink disgusting sugar water crap. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I didn't think there'd be alcohol in there because of the budget. but They look like, good, though, don't they? They hmm. looked perfect. Yeah, they looked Looked really real good. great when it was being poured on Jam's head. Yes, exactly. <laughs> My curls! <laughs> what was interesting is the writers for a while kind of um, partnered Jam and Dexhart. They kind of made them this evil force against against Amy for a while, yeah. against uh, Leslie for a while with the, oh, yeah. the, the high fiving and the, you know, I second it second, you know, yeah, it was yep. really funny. Jam just, Oh, Glazer is. I know that what, was what guy. the next question. Like, how is it working with him? Because he is such a beast as well with improvising. I know oh, you touched on a little bit already, but talk about fearless. <sighs> this guy will make himself look like an utter and complete buffoon ass. <laughs> he is in your face, which is amazing because John is not like that. He's the mm-hmm. nicest guy with a couple of kids and a wonderful yeah. wife and just kind of lives life. But he is fearless in that very abrasive way that he has, which was perfect for Jam. Yeah. I didn't, oh, yeah. Know, yeah. I didn't know who he was until he got hired to do him. You know, I was like, this guy, who is this guy? He's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's one of those when I like I didn't super notice anything that he'd done on IMDb just because of me. Um, I, you know, that wasn't, I guess, my he, I wasn't in his audience, you know, until Parks and Rec happened. But then when I started researching him, which this is literally I feel every person on Parks and Rec, I was like, oh, but they do improv and then they create this sketch show or they create this short video or whatever it is. And I'm like, oh, my God, of course, like a C's was on Human Sketch and I was or Human Giant rather, which is the sketch show, um, which is, you know, every person in that sketch show has been on Parks and Rec. And so I was like, oh, my God, that's why it just like creates this wonderful comedy community uh, when you look at it from the outside and not as, you know, not as a fan of Parks and Rec necessarily but like as a research perspective it's so fun to see that everybody is in this community together and Mm -hmm. it is astonishing how many people have their roots in improv and for anybody listening that is trying to get into acting trying to get into this business Mm -hmm. the entertainment industry Mm -hmm. as an actor i cannot recommend enough to take improv classes because it's 
I, I, I was going to say almost required. It's required now. They want to see where you studied on your resume. Like I've got IO West on mine. They want to know where you studied, how long. Everybody wants to see improv because it's becoming more and more regular, especially in commercials. Yep. Where they want you to kind of write the end of the of the bit. They say, and then and then just kind of come up with a button at the end. So you're writing all the time. Yeah. And yeah. that's what they want. When we were doing Chevy with Randall, mm -hmm. we wrote, I mean, the writers were writing episodes. We wrote or co we wrote or rewrote a ton of episodes. We'd improv Randall. This is great. So if, if we shot three commercials in a day and we had yeah. an extra two hours or two and a half hours, again, creative Randall would say, okay, guys, come on in, in this office and we're going to talk. And Randall said, I, I have this idea for a spot where you know this happens and this happens so let's let's just let's just run it and improvise it and we mm -hmm. would improvise it and work on it for like 15 20 minutes to go great let's go shoot it and we would just add another commercial to the day because we had and we had written it we had written yeah, this spot, yeah. improv the whole thing and shot it that's how that's what you got to have these days that your chops as an actor you got to have that ability to think very fast mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. what improv really does and you know and to not feel like oh I made the wrong choice or I shouldn't have done that it doesn't matter it's where it takes you yeah in any given situation and, it, and it's such a collaboration too because oh, you have to be listening like that's like you 101 have, you know not you, only yes it's, and it's but what are you and, yes anding to you know what I mean it. it's usually you and standing up there with one other person sometimes two other people mm -hmm. with nothing and it's it still gives me butterflies I still I know Ugh. It's so uh, nerve-wracking. Give, give me the written word, but I <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, but it's it, it's definitely something that you really have to hone. And, yes. And, and you don't ever perfect that, I don't think. But and again, right. watching John Glazer and Amy Poehler, it's just incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I recommend honestly improv to anyone. Like, I don't yeah. think that you need to be like an actor to just to do it. I definitely think that if you are going to be an actor, I hundred percent agree with you. Where like commercials for sure just want you to be able to think on your feet. Mm -hmm. uh, but I always say like uh, I commend people that do. Uh, I know co some corporate offices have this as yes. like a thing where they take classes and it's just, just like, it say, gets you out of your shell. It yeah. makes you stop being in your head so much. Right. Uh, when I took beginning over at IO, a, a lot of the people were either, you know, their their company wanted them to, to do some speaking at some event or uh, to, you know, be able to talk in a, in a big group of people and people yep. were just not able to do that. And so they would put them in there or the person themselves would put themselves in there just to get better at what they were mm -hmm. able to do. Oh, it's 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 huge. Yeah, it's very important, it, especially mm -hmm, yeah. if you are a no person, a control person which mm -hmm. I was for, for a long time. Like, you know, if it wasn't exactly what you wanted, no, no, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta leave no out the door. Cause it, yeah, you know, you gotta be super it just flexible. kills the scene immediately. Yeah. Oh, that's so crazy. I know I had a classmate that did the same situation where, uh, I think his, was it his office maybe that was uh, like actually paid for him to be in classes? And I was like, Oh my God, that's so effing cool. I think that that is so needed. If, especially if you're like briefing people or you have like an office where you have to really stand up for yourself kind of thing. Like it yeah. just gives you some confidence and it's I will say it's really sucky at the beginning because because it <laughs> it's, it's so scary. It's and then really, you it's, get, it's really scary. And sometimes you go home and go, Oh man, if I just done this instead of that, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's death. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to be because if you're thinking about even in, in the scene, if you're thinking about what you didn't say, or whatever, oh, you're 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 dead in the water. You're dead. In the totally. Got to move uh, forward. Right. Right. And that's why everyone's so committed to their character in Parks and Rec, too, because you have to be like you said with Mo, like she and, and you and Jay and everybody. It's just like they are their character. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> very, very defined. I felt everybody was really very, very well defined. Yeah. Yeah. So how many days for each episode were you on set? Like, were you just there for like one day or did you have to go back like for the whole week or what yeah, was that? Uh, like? uh, let's see. Uh, the first practice date was one day. Uh, I was, I was purchased for the week. They call it top of show where <laughs> okay. they buy you, for, they buy you for the week. So mm. you go in whenever they need you to go in. So, uh, cause on uh, Christmas scandal, I had multiple days, multiple oh. days on Christmas scandal. Cause there were so many scenes in so many yeah. different locations. 
Mm -hmm. uh, in Anne's house. And then, of course, in the restaurant, which I will right. get that name for you, by the way. Okay. Uh, and I'll follow up. <laughs> so multiple days on that. And then I think I would get usually one, sometimes two. I remember there was another, ooh, there was another episode where I had a couple of scenes. One was uh, looking at Jam's car, I think. Oh, there. yeah. That was like well, literally was two seconds. Corvette. Yeah, yeah. But we shot that because it, it was a different thing. And, you know, so we kind of were going in and out of that one. And um, I got a Japanese girl to sit in it once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or was it Chinese? I don't know. <laughs> He's into the Japanese culture. That would check out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think it was that oh episode, God, actually, dumbass. that Morgan... Uh, came up to me and said, just get, want to give you a heads up. Um, Amy's writing a really good episode for you, uh, which was Second Chance, which mm -hmm. he said, and she's writing another scandal for you. So just, it's the next episode. So just be, be on the aware. It's really, yeah. and it's really good. And I was like, oh, great. And mm -hmm. it was, and ironically, it was the hundredth episode. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. It was the, she wrote the hundredth episode with Michael and um blessed me with that fabulous text mexting and oh my god and kevin wait hang on i'm pretty positive i recorded this because i wanted you i knew you'd remember it but i'm pretty positive i recorded a piece of it because i wanted our audience to like refresh because this scene i was like we need to remind everybody how amazing this was hang on let me see if this yes is please <laughs> Oh, this is Darcy. Darcy's life. I recorded that too. <laughs> <laughs> about my first thing. series, my very like, first show. That doesn't sound about. like Parks and Rec. <laughs> That's what? not right. <laughs> Maddie's like, is that Holly singing? <laughs> okay, hang on, wait. Yeah. Inappropriate texting, sexting, and text mexting, which is where you send photos of your junk from the restroom of a Chili's to go. Mm. Does this make me a bad boy? You tell me. No. Really, tell me. It gets me off when women tell me that. He's reading this. He wrote this down. I sent these texts to roughly 100 women under the following pseudonyms. <laughs> Enrique Shockwave, Willie Dynamite, Lee Harvey Teabag. <laughs> well, at least you won't have to... It goes on. Yeah. And then you say Anthony Weiner at the end. Well, yeah. I've got a little scoop. I've got a little nugget yes. that, oh my God, tell that me I've never you. told anyone before. And I'm going to read them to you now, and I apologize to your audience because they're a little risque. Oh, my God. We have an explicit there, warning. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> there, were, there were other ones in the script, which I have the script here. I will read to you. And then uh, Dean, who was I, Dean was directing, and I said, I have a feeling I'm going to write some more. I'm going to write a whole list of names just in case because Dean had said, I want to keep you talking. Well, you've got, we've got to keep you talking while they have this little scene going on uh, it, with, between uh, Amy, uh, between uh, yeah. Leslie and, and so. Leslie so, and Ben are talking like while you're in the background. While I'm doing okay. things. So they wanted me to keep adding names and adding names and adding names. So the ones in the script. Yes, Get I'm ready, everybody. Classes, the ones that, that they cut out, they didn't cut out, but you can't really hear that mm -hmm. were in the script in addition to uh, Lee Harvey Teabag, I believe is that one. <laughs> and then there's. Lieutenant William, uh, no, Lieutenant Willem von Penis, <laughs> Sir Thrustalot. No. And then I came up with, I came up with like five or six. I can only remember two of them. Uh, one was yeah. Ben Berstanke because Ben <laughs> Bernanke was the, uh, the uh, Treasury Secretary at the time. So I came up with oh. Ben Berstanke. And my personal favorite, which is a twist on Harry S. Truman, it was Harry Ass True Man. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Harry oh true man. Wow. Harry ass true man. Oh. And of course, Anthony Weiner. Again, oh. you can't write it better than Anthony Weiner who's in the middle of a sex scandal at the time. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's literally his and name. These people don't remember who Anthony Weiner, which is the perfect name for a guy involved in a sex scandal. Yes. Who is sending pictures of his junk to other per people. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's that was so amazing. Good. I have I'm gonna add in so much applause in that one. Yes. <laughs> my favorite line in that is when Leslie just comes in and she's like, he wrote this. Yeah, he wrote right. this. Like, reading this the, right now. Yeah, I you the way you deliver it is so I have the paper, I'm kinda have the paper and I'm like it. Really... 
<laughs> Let me tell you, Adam, Adam told me this. So I ran into mm-hmm. Adam. Uh, I forget. It was, oh, it may have been, it was one of the, I think it was at the rap party mm-hmm. for that season. And Adam said, Kevin, I got to tell you something. When Amy and I were watching it, because they hadn't seen it before. I, I recorded just the, the speech. Mm-hmm. And by the way, uh, Jay was there. Cause oh, he, yeah, because he was reporting. What, what, right now, what about his new sex calendar, turn around. So Jay is there with all these extras and Dean. And I'm reading this stuff. I'm, I'm doing my speech and then a- adding all these names, including the ones I was doing. Jay was like, Jay had his hands over his, he was, he was, every, he was convulsing. The camera guys were like, you could be laughing so much. Dean was howling. And, and I, Dean wrote me some more stuff too, which we just added on just to keep going and going. We didn't know how much they would need. So, but they were, I mean, it was such funny stuff. So I, when Adam told me, Adam said, Amy and I were watching this. It was the first time we were shooting the first time we had seen the 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 footage on the screen mm-hmm. they actually were it was on the tv and he said we we couldn't get we couldn't get through it we could not get through our scene we were laughing oh. so freaking hard <laughs> it was so funny oh my god that's it was awesome really brilliant, brilliantly funny and that's and, so and great back to cameo some of the things i get requested most like i'll say if it's for a wedding i'll say i'm so glad that i'll i'm going to be there that you want me to be your best man <laughs> wedding, Jim, and uh, I was extra happy to hear that you're having a wedding reception at your local Chili's to go. <laughs> well, I love to spend a lot of time, you know, text Mexican. Yes. And pictures of your junk. Yes. Exactly. That's amazing. Okay. I have a question. This might be silly, but like when you were on the TV doing your reading off, the, like when you were at the podium kind of thing, that wasn't happening at the same time, right? Like you had nope. already recorded that. And I then shot were- that a couple of, a few days before. I think I, it might've been the first or second day of shooting. And then they okay. edited it, whatever they were going to use it. and okay. then put it on the TV. And uh, then they shot their scene while, while it was playing live. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, That's what were, I figured, were, but I didn't know if it was like a movie magic moment. <laughs> well, when they were talking, they would, there would be no volume, so, but it would right. lead in on. They would they would enhance that later. But um, yeah, they were watching it as it was on the TV. Not I on, know, but as they were about to do the scene, and they were like, we were we were weeping. It was so. Funny. That is amazing. <laughs> wow. Oh my god! And that because that was in I think that was in what season six or maybe it was five. Was, I can't. I think that was oh that was six. Yeah, that was six. Okay, yeah, because I was gonna say season five is like where you're the councilman, kind of in the back. For the most of the council town halls moments. Yeah, I get um, a line. I get. I get a line here, a line there, or again, yeah, a reaction. Yeah, but season six was like your time to shine. Lot, I was like, yeah, yes, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is and, wild. And then I got one. I got one little brief scene. I think in in season seven. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I was glad to have. I mean, it was just any time. I was like, every time I went in there, it was, it was fantastic. Again, just like a family, like a fam. I remember. <laughs> Because we'd, we'd hang out at the craft services table a lot as actors are wants to do and mm-hmm. crew members are want to do. And I remember uh, the rap party, they would always at the rap parties would show a lot of, of like a 15 minute, maybe a, even a, almost a half hour outtakes. Mm. For that sort of thing they would put together just for the cast and crew. Oh, love bloopers. And what they would do at parks is they would throw in little uh, commercials in the middle of them. One was a uh, Perd Hapley's video store or something. And one of them was Mo, you know, Joan, Cals- uh, Joan, I forget what her. Calamazo, bit- yeah. Yeah. I forget what it was, but uh, an, a, a, for the rap party season two, they did a video uh, re-election um, commercial for re-electing Sexy Dexy, Councilman Dexart, and Nick did the voiceover for it. Oh my God. I, when I was shooting uh, uh, the next season, I said, uh, we were at the Crafty and I said, Nick, uh, thank you for doing the voice for my, uh, for my reelect Dex Hart commercial for the rap part. And he was like, that was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I, loved I loved doing it. It was delicious. <laughs> oh my God. Nick Offerman, what a guy. <laughs> I need to watch the fixing it or whatever it is that he has with uh, Impo. Yeah. 
Start yeah. This week. That's that's the Swedish show. I, those two together are absolutely amazing. I saw Nick do his. Um, he did a play with May uh, with his wife. Uh, oh, Megan yeah. Mullally, yeah. Megan, yeah. Um, Tammy. <laughs> yes. In the show. <laughs> right. They should Megan have done Mullally, a, uh, a scandal the between the two of you. Go um, here in Los Angeles a few years ago, so we went out to see that. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, Maddie, that would have been really fun to have a scandal between <laughs> Megan Mullally, Tammy, and, and Dex Hart. That That's be... right. Yeah. Who can out, who get out sex scandal one another? Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> he's been so great. aggressive sexually, and he, you know, he's a freak, as he actually says at one point. Right. Oh, so yeah. Like, there's some really dirty stuff, and oh, I'm a freak. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Some things I've never heard of. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. This was when Donna was tweeting from the Parks and Rec uh, no, Twitter no, no, account. That, that was right? when uh, that was when Aubrey's um, when she was going to become. Oh. You know, uh, she was, was going to be the, in the animal control. Yeah, and we're reading from Chris Pratt and her emails. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my husband. Uh, he's my husband. Uh, <laughs> still, they were very graphic and appreciated by all of us. <laughs> yes. Oh, right. Oh my God, love that. Well, oh, so. Man. Who directed the mo- the majority of your episodes? Do you remember, or yes. was it all uh, different? Uh, Craig Zisk, okay. Who uh, I had worked with, he created. Uh, I think he was creator and co creator of the show I did. Uh, I had a recurring on called the um, uh, United States of Tara. Okay. Which okay. Was, which is on Showtime. Okay. Uh, Craig directed uh, two of them, and then Dean. I. Th- think directed two or three of them. Okay. Okay. Yomer Ciccone directed one. And do you know who Yomer is? I don't. Uh, he's uh, he's in that uh, three person rap group with um, A- Andy Sam Andy Samberg. Oh, sure. Oh are. my gosh. Yes. Lonely Island. Yes, of course. Yeah. Right. Duh. Yeah. That's oh my gosh. And- Which the what? Yes. Um. But he yeah. was he the the one in Parks and Rec? Because one of those guys no. is in Parks and Rec no. as the Grizzle guy. No, no, no. Yomer was never in it. Yomer directed a couple of episodes, I think. Um, mm-hmm. What's his name, Yomer? What? His father. His father is the artistic director for Berkeley Rep. Oh. Um, worked for Saturday Night Live, and he directs so much television now in film. It's incredible. I think he directs a couple of films. Yeah, but he's okay. with the Jay Holly. Wow. Oh, I see it. Yes, Jorma Tacone. Okay, I see mm-hmm. him. Yeah, Jorma's the Grizzle guy. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's he the is. yeah he's the one that um yeah he <laughs> like he skateboards away on his yeah. iPad. Oh okay. oh yeah right 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 yeah 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 we're stealing oh, wait, people's I had information. No idea he directed it too. He was, I'm trying to remember. I was trying to think of his name the other day. Who's the guy that um you know you can just order this on online. You can get oh yeah <laughs> I don't remember his name. <laughs> You can buy He's tools great, online. Though. I'm actually you, watching Iron Man 2 uh, right now. Yeah, you can watch Iron Man 2 right now. You don't need a video store. I'm, I'm actually getting it. Yeah, love they that. They Yes. Oh, my God. That's awesome. I'll say that, what his name is in our recap moment. That's hilarious. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, wait. So there was this other cut clip because speaking of Peacock, they have been releasing all these producers cuts now um, yeah, for oh, not only Parks and Rec, but for The Office, too. Oh, great. And so there's a bunch of cut scenes. Uh, we just talked to Jim Meskimen, um, who is the what I guy, is what we call him. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize, so they had a talent show moment, and it was Purr doing uh, slam poetry, and uh-huh. it was him doing uh, the, uh, impressions, because he's an impressionist. And so he was doing, like, these bad impressions yep. um, to kind of, like, you know, be in the character of this guy. Yep. He so does a like, lot of really good impre- in, in real life. He's he's very good. I've seen his stuff on YouTube. And I've, I've been in auditions with him before and stuff. He's really, really great. Yeah. Yeah. He has this whole, like, little YouTube moment, too, where he does impressions with his wife and his yep. kids and yep. all this stuff. Yep. But, okay, I wanted to play this cut clip because I wanted to share with our audience, and I wanted to ask you about it if you remember it. But hold on. Okay. Let me play it. You should know about the other councilman. Councilman Hauser is reasonable. Councilman Milton is a 106-year-old racist, but if you give him a sleeve of saltines, he'll be putty in your hands. Councilman Jam is a corrupt dentist with terrible hair. And watch your back around Councilman Dexart. Why is he very sneaky? No, I mean literally. He takes pictures of women's lower backs and puts them on Twitter. He's a perv. Oh, Oh my gosh. (laughs) So she's explaining to Kristen Bell's character yep, who yep. takes Leslie's uh, place that. in the castle. Yep, when they're when she's kind of getting her uh, situated to take over for her, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. And I was wondering if you had heard that, that before. 
Yeah. <laughs> was Did that you know that the, was going to be in there? Yeah. Was that from the deleted scenes? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember when I I did know about that actually. Yeah. Okay. It, it was in the script. Yeah. So when I'd read that, yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah, I thought that was so great. funny because they are so, I, they are so detailed and putting oh, you guys yeah. in every part of it, even if you're not in the scene. They I talk thought about I knew it. about that. Maybe I did. No, I'm. I feel like I I either seen that before. I'm pretty sure I've seen that before because um. Because I remember when she was referencing everybody and who they are. Yeah, yeah. Oh right, yeah. I thought that was really funny that um, the other, like the older guy, the older councilman is like dyes his hair by the end of oh, it Mil too. Milton, uh, Milton. Yeah. Uh, it was James Green played him. He just passed away uh, oh, a couple of oh. years, a year and a half ago. Yeah, oh, I knew Jim, I knew Jim before we did this. Wow. Uh, I knew his wife when I used to do theater at uh, Los Angeles Theater Center. His wife was a stage manager there. Oh. And you'll know her. And I knew Jim. Ironically, my brother went to Cal State Fullerton after me. And Jim was brought in to play the lead and you can't take it with you. My brother was in he was a guest actor. So I've known Jim for years. Wow. He, was, he worked with everybody. Oh. I love oh in season, I love in season seven when is it seven when they come back and we're, we've jumped into the future. Remember? Yeah. Yes. Yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's got this this black wig on and he's got like a Walkman or something or like yes. a, like a, 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 a what is it? An iP iPad. Or or what, an iPod. Yeah. <laughs> well, whatever the equivalent of that they did in Parks and Rec, I can't remember what it's called, but, but yeah. Oh my God, that's wild. Oh, my yeah, jaw was, was dropped the entire time when you were talking about him. I did not know that. Rest in yeah. peace. Pour one out. He was great. Yeah. So was hilarious. Great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. They all were. Yeah. In yeah, Avons, totally. he played the, the main, the, um, which one was the main, uh, what was the character that was Hauser. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. Well, do you have a favorite time on set? Like, do you have a favorite episode that you were in, or, or were all of them kind of okay? You know, uh, or good rather, not okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, you know, Christmas Scandal holds a very dear place for me because there was so much, and and the scene, you know, should we and all that, and the scene within Pawnee, you know, today or the, the uh, yeah, Pawnee today, right? Mm -hmm. with Joan. Yeah, yeah, with Joan. That that was so much fun to do, just hiding behind the, around the thing and then having her being so shocked. It was just, it was delicious, as Nick would say. <laughs> and of course, I, I, I will always be grateful to Amy for writing me into the 100th episode. Um, mm. That was just wonderful. Yeah. That I, makes my those, heart those so happy my to hear. I, I've got so many moments that other people, and so many episodes I love that other characters were in. Of my stuff, those were by far my favorite. Probably the the one with my kid's birthday party too. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a moment that I, I swear to you, every time I see it, I am doubled over and weeping. And that is when Ron's got to eat a banana. <laughs> and he, 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 he's got to get more potassium in his diet. He's been really sick. And I, at one point, like when he peels it, something sticks on him. He's like... <laughs> He's trying to get the, the thing off a of his little piece off his finger. Yeah. And he stuffs like, it in a burger at the end. He's he's like, like, in a, in a yeah. burger. Then he's, he's like, oh ladies, gosh. ladies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just, that <sighs> kills me. Every That's time. so they're, amazing. They're chock full of, every episode is chock full of a little moment that is unbelievable. Like, every it was not an, there was not an episode. And again, I was a, I still am huge fan of the show. I wasn't like one of these guys that comes in. I do my guest star, you know, mm -hmm. I watch, I did a topic show on, on NCIS and I, NCIS is a great show. Did I watch yeah. every episode? No. Uh, but I watched every episode of parks and I still do because it's, I, I every episode I'm doubled over in laughter at, at at least one moment in mm -hmm. every single episode. Yeah. And I find that it really bonds everybody that's watching it too, mm -hmm. because I think that um, with The Office, it was a little bit more polarizing in the sense where like, if you don't get it, you don't get it, unfortunately. Which, you don't like, have that kind of, if you don't have that kind of sense, sense of, of humor, humor. Uh, yeah. and watch the English one, geez, talk about <laughs> Right. Well, because like oh. I, I'm saying that because my dad and I can really watch Parks and Rec together, but he doesn't 
get The Office. And so I was like, oh, man, maybe you won't get Parks and Rec. But I put it on one time when he was around and uh, when he was visiting and we like could actually bond over that. And I was like, oh, wow, like we're very opposite. Uh, well, maybe we're more similar than we think. But, you know, it's nice to have something that you can bond over. Mm-hmm. And to, the fact that Parks and Rec played a huge role in that is a huge deal. And that I'm not alone in that. That's not a unique situation. So many people can bond agree. over this one show. It's amazing. I yeah. agree. I, I really feels agree. like home. It, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's true. And I, I think that's why it has such universal appeal at this point now. I mean, uh, so many other countries have it. And that shows you how universal these characters are and the situations are because, you know, which might not happen with The Office. I'm sure The Office is very big. I know it is. But, um, yeah. you know, this it's just is a different vibe. That, it's similar, but it's a different vibe. vibe. This has more, mm-hmm. Parks has a, a humanity, a, a, a it's got heart. It's got mm-hmm. so much heart. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, there's this character of Leslie Nope. My gosh. Yeah. The, the most positive, uplifting. Yeah. Always sees the good in people. Hardworking. Multi- ridiculous multitasker you can ever imagine with all of the, <laughs> the, the all of the Anders trying to buy from um he was trying to she was trying to buy the waffle maker and they were oh yeah over each other you know her and her husband it's just it's so, so good great. so oh. so great i yeah. love that Everybody well, i have more. um a question about darcy but before we get there um maddie did you have any last questions about or not last questions but any questions that i skipped over and no, i'll tell I just... you if it's if you if you say it's the last question and there's one more <laughs> after that i am out of here yeah. <laughs> you're walking out the door <laughs> no, I would say my, the question that I had with Parks and Rec, because I've kind of wanted to ask it with a couple of the other guests we've had, but you, I think you're the guests we've had that has been in the most episodes. So I feel like this is a really good question for you because everyone has said that the set on Parks and Rec was really special. Everyone is really kind. Everyone is really welcoming. Um, and it, like you're saying, right, it felt like a family. Have you ever felt that on other sets? Has it? Have you ever felt something kind of similar or ha- was that just really unique it it was it it is really unique in the grand scheme of show business mm-hmm. most of the time as a guest star actor which is what i am predominantly a what they call a journeyman actor i make my living i make my living as an actor i get my health care through screen actors guild sag aftra as a journeyman actor and as a guest star you got to come in you got to know your stuff. You got to be good, but you can't be too good to upstage the leads on the show. Mm-hmm. Huh. Because the leads on the show are the leads on the show. You are there to facilitate them. So you got to kind of be this, you got to be good, but you can't be too good, but you got to be prepared and hit your mark and do your thing and then just go away. A lot of sets, you get there, you say hello to the director for two minutes, you rehearse a couple of times, you meet the star, or whatever. Hi, how are you? You do your scenes. You go home. Two shows I've worked on that I have said have the best sets, the best atmosphere Mm -hmm. on the set ever. Parks and Recreation is probably number one. And NCIS is right there with it. Because Mm -hmm. Mark Mark Harmon is like uh, Amy. He -hmm. sets the tone on that show. Everyone is welcoming. Everyone is kind. And it is exactly the same thing on Parks. When people come on and they're a guest star, hey, let, let me show you where, you know, like Aziz or, or you know, um, anybody. Yeah. You know, let me show you where Kraft is or this is where we eat and, you know, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. When you're sitting in the makeup trailer, sometimes, you know, you don't address the leads. You just don't. You sit in your chair, you shut right. up. Amy's like going... Kev, did you see what the, the there was somebody put this on uh, on the thing and it's got a whole bunch of Dex Hart stuff? Did you see this? And she's showing me the thing on her phone. Ugh, you know, that's so I mean, cool. in, incredible. And not just Amy, everyone. Mm-hmm. Nick, I told you about the when he did the voiceover mm-hmm. thing. Chris, always so great. Big bear hug at the at the reunion thing. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I will never forget uh, the my first day. I walk in to the, uh, to get made up mm-hmm. and Aubrey is in there and she says, hi, hi. She said, oh, hi. Oh, you're oh great, great, great. I'm Aubrey and welcome and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, completely opposite from the character that-, that Right, she, right. And was so kind and so nice. And, and again, 
uh, uh, Paul and, and Nick complimenting me about, you know, being prepared. And uh, yes, Rashida, when we were driving up, I mean, when we were driving up to her house, when she's like, it was way too easy to get yeah. this guy here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had a ton of time sitting in the car to just chit chat about her schooling and wow. et cetera, et cetera. Cause, yeah. And um, so again, and everybody, Adam, Jim is still somebody I, I, I know because Jim is a, a journeyman actor too. I mean, he's mm. was Jerry, exactly Larry, the Terry. same guest star <laughs> actor as I was. And in fact, you know, we, I'd see him at auditions and all that sort of thing. And Rob Lowe, gracious as all get out. I mean, oh my God. Uh, first of all, I'm married, but Rob Lowe is just too damn good looking. He's, <laughs> so freaking good looking. He's a handsome fella. That's yeah. I, use, I use Rob's face care products now because he did some thing where he's got all this product. Uh, I did not know that. At my age, I'm putting more cream on my face than on my coffee at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I, we were, um, at the rap party for the Paley thing mm -hmm. and my wife was with me and Rob's walking around and I said, Rob, Kevin Simons, you know, I played Dexter. He's like, Oh, well, it's so good to see you. How are you? And I said, and I was like, oh, this is my wife, Darby. You know, it's like, I'm introducing my wife to Rob Lowe. And she was like, Oh, oh so nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a mistake. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah, 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 and I mean, I'm sure it could be like mundane if you're on a set, like you just, anything, even though it's so exciting, um, can turn into something that might be monotonous since it's a job. But it's amazing that this is, that's how I feel every time we're on the podcast talking to people. I'm like, this Never, is so exciting it, every single time. Yeah, and again, it stems and from Amy, that. but it was, and, and, and I'm talking about, and I'm talking about the crew. I still run into crew guys, on, you know, at this grocery store and we chat for a long time. Like the grips, mm. the grips, camera operators. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've worked with them on other shows and it's we always talk about parts because everyone was laughing all yeah. the time. The cameraman, yeah. the grips, the everyone was always laughing. That's and amazing. again, it, every time, like if I hadn't had an episode in weeks and I got back there, man, it was like right back to it again. I knew the PAs, I knew the ADs, everybody, and they're all welcome. And it's like, oh, we're all back together again. It literally yeah. was like that, especially with the, con with the uh, councilman. Yeah, we were kind of always together. So we had we spent a lot of time together. It was great with with Amy. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Council we people. <laughs> we talk about everything. That's we so stuck great. On a cruise ship. I mean, just, just crazy stories that she would have. <laughs> great. So yes, that's so cool. Absolutely. An absolute joy. Everything you've heard and everything people and people are always happy to hear that because like, going, oh, I had always dreamed that it, or not dream, but I always hoped that it would be a really great set as good as it was to watch mm -hmm. and it really was it honest to goodness was and you do not get that often well mm -hmm. and it shows on screen too yes you know it your guys's chemistry it translates mm -hmm. yeah. that's so amazing yeah i was gonna ask about uh this discovery channel show though your first ever series regular it was it your first ever series my regular? very first series regular darcy's wildlife it was the first time that uh discovery had worked with nbc so it was an nbc show oh Oh, okay. They call a tween show for mm -hmm. tweeners. And mm -hmm. it was um, the new show that took over for um, Lizzie McGuire. Oh, was, okay. Lizzie McGuire had finished. And so the guys who were the head writers on that and the creator of Lizzie uh, had this new show called Darcy's Wild Life. Gotcha. So, yeah, that was my very first series. We shot it in Toronto. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And uh, I had always been a co-star, guest star, occasional recurring, did a lot of soaps, mm -hmm. a lot of soap operas recurring on the, the Bold and the Beautiful. I was and the, the Young and the Restless, saw that too. Mm -hmm. I did, I did every, every soap on television I've done. Every, <laughs> That's amazing. Every Is that one. something? Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry. But anyway, it was my first series and I got to play The Dad. It was my first time <laughs> playing The Dad. And yeah. um, uh, it, changed my career in terms of I was getting seen for a lot better stuff after I'd had a series regular. Right. I just got seen for bigger parts. I got into casting offices I'd never been into before. So again, that was a really, really big boost for me. And talk about a rarity in the business. I still know very well uh, Sarah Paxton, who played yeah. 
uh, the leads. She played Darcy. Uh, pretty much a lot of the people that I worked with, her parents are very dear friends of ours now, and she's grown up and married. And, and um, so some people for that show, we still, in fact, the creators of the show I, are some of our best friends. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's really Wait, awesome. Maddie, what were you going to ask about you when he was talking about soaps? I was going to ask, is, is it different to prep for a soap opera than it would be to prep for like Parks and Rec? Very much so. Because it's uh, soaps are so specific because you've got uh, multiple cameras on you. Mm -hmm. So if on Parks, you're going to do several takes. On a mm -hmm. soap, you're like doing one. And they're catching yeah. every actor from, from a different camera. So you got A, B, and C cameras, sometimes even a D camera. So when somebody gives you a line, they, they call it a soap opera pause. Mm. When somebody gives you a line, you don't answer right away because the camera that's on them has to go off and the camera that's on you has to come on. In other mm. words, they have to switch the shot. So when they finish talking, now the camera switches to me where I go, yes, you are going to live or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And so is, there's that weird pause between them. They finish talking and you start saying your next line. Not only that, you want to talk about running by the seat of your pants, going by the seat of your pants. These poor actors that are serious, they've got their lines right here and they're going, okay, and we're rolling and speed and they stick it under their butts and they do the same. I mean, it moves yeah. so, you've got to get so much in the can in one day. And you know, they're there from seven in the morning till five in the afternoon and you got to shoot 30 scenes. I mean, they are moving. Well, we were talking to Linda Montana uh, about this, who plays Denise Yermley, the one who sings the national anthem and telethon yep. and everything uh -huh. and beauty pageant, because uh, she's done a couple soaps, too. And I always say, like, so many people give soap operas, like, such a bad reputation. But I'm just like, you guys don't understand that it's five days a week, every single day. And that's why these stories are, like, are all conflated and mixing and twisted and whatever, because, like, you have to be, not only, like, for the writers, but the actors, like, are learning these, like you said, in literally five seconds. <laughs> like, what? It, it develops... It, I'll tell you what it does. It develops bad habits as an actor mm -hmm. because you are just literally, you are cramming lines into your head. You don't have to feel what you're saying. You can fake what feel what you're saying, but you don't have to even believe what you're saying. And you, if you have to be able to turn on the waterworks like that, but you know, you're, you're uh, and cut. Okay. So uh, we're moving on. And you know, I mean, it just right. develops because you are cramming lines into your head. Yeah. So you don't have time to, where is this coming from? Where is the motivation for this? How, what, what is our relationship? You don't have time for that. What's my want? Yeah. Shut up, get on to the next line. I was doing, I don't want to say, I'll just say it, General Hospital. And they, <laughs> move, they shoot, I think they shoot 50 pages a day. Something Holy crazy. Cool. That's like, insane. Crazy. So I had, I had eight scenes, eight scenes in this episode, two episodes. Eight scenes. We shot them all in one day. Mm -hmm. I was called at seven in the morning, and I was home out of out of wardrobe. Shot all the scenes out of makeup, mm -hmm. out of wardrobe, and home by ten o'clock in the morning. Oh my! Eight God. scenes. <gasps> at one point, at one point, we were in the middle of a scene. Somebody drops like a lead bar on the soundstage. It's just clank, clank, and I'm going, "Oh, well, we're going to stop." Moving on. We got it. Good. Next. You can hear it on the tape. Oh, my <laughs> God. And they, oh, my gosh. On. <laughs> yeah, they just don't have time. Nope. That's crazy. Dang. Nope. nope. Wow, wow, and wow. The they need to do a documentary about soap operas, I feel. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And the actor I was working with who is very well known on the show, he's one of the mm -hmm. big, big characters. You know, again, he's got to learn so much dialogue. He would feed me the wrong cue word or line and... Mm -hmm. Which so you didn't know when to come. I knew when to come in, but he fed it to me so that I had to change the tense of what I was saying. In other words, I had to change what I was saying because of the line, the wrong line he was feeding me. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Moving on. That made sense. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Did you have a lot of lines in, in those shows as well? I mean, you said oh, yeah. scenes, but I didn't know if like you were in scenes just in the background or were you speaking a lot? Oh, no, 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 no. Those, these were huge. You know, okay. I, the, the, when I was bold and the beautiful, I did two months on Bold and the Beautiful. Oh I, wow. I played a lawyer <gasps> and uh, I'll never forget. I played a lawyer. I was, I was hired for I think, two or three episodes. And then uh, I got called into the casting director's office and she said, good news. You're going to trial. 
You're going to be around for a while. <laughs> right, you got some big scenes. I uh, I sent my mom uh, your name because she watches Bold and the Beautiful. She hasn't oh. um, responded back yet, but she watches Bold and the Beautiful. And she was like, oh, my God, you're talking to someone from Bold and the Beautiful? What? What's his name? What did he play? <laughs> and so uh, I can't wait till she responds. I'll let you know. <laughs> I remember being – we were – my wife and I were in Italy a few years ago, and uh, our travel agent sends – uh sends little briefs of because my wife is a director tv director producer oh, and lovely. then they'll send little snippets of who's staying our traveling is great and they send little snippets of who is staying that these people are here's what they do in the united states this man's yeah. been sitting on blah 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 and i we get to we get to florence and we're checking and the entire staff comes out to meet us it's like what the hell I right know what's going on i know we have a nice room but come on <laughs> and so I was like, what's going on? They're giving us gifts. And so what? finally I started talking to people as we were just finding out where we we're going to go and that sort of thing. And the one lady goes, I got to tell you, uh, I, I love the bold and the beautiful. That's, a, <gasps> that's a, one, of my, it's one of my favorite at the show. And the other woman said, no, no, no. I don't like those soap operas. I loved you when you were on Desperate at the Housewives. <laughs> <laughs> Global reach, dude. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my, Lanta. The House of Wives. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the beautiful for a while was the biggest show in the world. It was the most watched show in the world. Oh wow, wow. that's insane. I yeah. mean, yeah, mm-hmm. I watched it. I grew up watching it too with my mom. Well, so like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I remember they switched the lead guy. Um, shit, I forgot his name. Victor. I want to say they switched. Um, no, no, not Victor. Maybe that was younger than restless. Regardless, they in one of them they switched the character because I guess one guy wasn't available. It was Ridge. It was Ridge. Oh, I'm Ridge. Yeah, I worked with the first Ridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they switched him, and I was like, no, well, what? Why? <laughs> I, that happens I liked all the, the time. First. But Brooke, <laughs> the woman that plays Brooke, is still on that thing. I couldn't yeah, oh my God, oh my yes. Gosh. She's still on. Was it, is it Brooke or I forget? Yeah, it's Brooke. My sister's name is Brooklyn. And my mom always jokes that she like knew the name Brooke from the show. And like, right, right. she liked that name. So that's not necessarily why her name is Brooklyn. But like she definitely had that in her head when she named my <laughs> sister, which wow. is hilarious. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> that's so awesome. Well, okay. Do you want to listen really fast to the um, theme song of the Darcy moment to remind your memory? Do you remember it? Oh, I remember it. I heard it every week. Yes, I definitely remember <laughs> it. It was kind of a rap, a rap thing. Yes, that it was. was. Yeah. This girl Darcy wants to oh. sometime but yeah it's, it's first, so wild the first time i had to do um one of those uh opening credit things where they say and and kevin simons yeah and you stand in front of a green screen and you do and you just kind of do a lot of this right like nodding <laughs> and smiling <laughs> arms crossed shrugs. that's great <laughs> you know that's typical so awesome. opening credit uh stuff yeah 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 oh like, my gosh again I've, I've been very blessed i i mean i've, I've i'm having a great career and uh yeah. Uh, and was, you know, was, who would have thunk that with all of these streaming services that it's just the gift that keeps on giving, I feel. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The Parks is definitely. I mean, it, it just is. Um, yeah. You know, people, they they love it. And, and mm-hmm. even in Los Angeles, because you think, well, you get spoiled. You know, you see celebs all the time. I mean, people are so nice. They're not obnoxious. And, and, I, and I would say besides Parks the most recognizability is from the, the kids shows, uh, mm. uh, best friends, whenever I Carly, I swear to you, people uh, watch these kids, watch these shows over and yes. over. And Henry danger is like, it's oh, yeah, huge. you're in that too. It's like massive. And I had yeah. a, three or four of those and it, it's crazy. I, people reach out all the time on this, on social media and they they're obsessed. It's yeah. Amazing. And you're in all age ranges now. Cause you've got the soap operas, the kids shows and parks. So like you've got yeah. beginning, middle and end of their lives. <laughs> I probably get asked other, other than how do you memorize all the lines, which is what everybody always asks you, you know, mm-hmm. how do you memorize all those lines? Well, you just do. But everybody <laughs> says, well, it's a well, lot. You create a history, I'm sure. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, the, the other question I think I get asked the most is, what do you like doing better? Stage, TV, film, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I always say I like doing 
all of it. And I like doing whatever pays because it's, Absolutely. I've done a ton of free stuff and I still do, you know, I'll do yeah. reading and stuff like that. But you utilize your skills as a commercial actor, as a film actor, as a television actor, as a voiceover actor, which I've done a ton of voiceover. Mm-hmm. You utilize all those, you approach them differently. Mm-hmm. But at the, at the end of the year, it's the bottom line of how your year was utilizing all of the talents and all of the skills that you've picked up over those years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, like Jay, who you, he does so many different things. He's got so many skill levels. Mine all happen to be in the acting world. Mm-hmm. Writing never really grabbed me. I was never really that. I, I like more of a script and then all, also impro- uh, improv and all that sort of thing. But yeah, yeah it's kind of, you have to utilize everything, all the, all the gifts that you've been given. Yeah. And I mean, as an actor, I feel that you have to know how everything works. So you have to have worked behind the stage or you have to have like some serious uh, empathy for the people that are doing everything else around you. And that makes you a better performer. You know, I always always tell young actors, um, even if you're doing extra work or you have a one line co-star when you're on set, observe, watch, see how a set works. Yes. Who is a grip? Who is lining guy? Those lining guys can make you look great or crappy. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. uh, be nice to know the camera people. You know, when if you're if you happen to be blessed and you get invited to a, a rap party or something, go up to the editor and thank them profusely because they can make or break Seriously? your episode. Oh my gosh. They can that's make so you look true. great or they can cut you to not look so great. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do you have a character that you resonate the most with on Parks and Rec? I yes, you've asked this before. I I I gotta tell you, I I love Ron. Okay. <laughs> I know you probably get a lot of people to say that. No, but no, I not a lot. Love Ron. It's okay. just so like he had to. Um, his Ron had to uh, take a, a, a course with. Um, Aubrey, April. April. The Katumps uh, thing with, with, with Chris, Chris Traeger. With, right. The Chris had the uh, Chris had to teach. Yeah. And he was going in there to tell Chris that she won't be taking the course. And then he says, I never had to take it. Oh, and, that, and he just looks and goes, well, this didn't go well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's the greatest person to resonate with, though. I mean, come yeah. on. That guy. Amazing. Right. The way they wrote him, too, and, like, all his skill sets that they put into the show, like, with woodworking and everything, mm-hmm. too. It's amazing. That's really good, too. It's really, yeah. really good. Oh, my gosh. That's but, so But I'm cool. amazed at when I started doing this little show – uh, the whatever, whatever practice date was episode three or four of season two, I think. Yeah. Early on. And I mean, I wouldn't say unknown because Amy was known. Right. Mm-hmm. But a no. lot of Z's and right. they weren't names yet. And I mean, um, Rashida was known because of The Office, but right. a lot of these people were not known. And now you're talking about Chris Pratt, who was sleeping in his Jeez, car Elise. in Hawaii. Oh trying to get extra work and now is like the biggest movie star in the world and oh my god Adam crazy. is gigantic and Aziz has got Master of None which is just incredible so good mm-hmm. and Nick is in everything you can possibly manage so yeah god bless these people this show changed a lot of lives absolutely mm-hmm. oh, oh my gosh well you have been so gracious with your time yes. thank, thank you, you so much and i do want to mention very briefly you have your youtube channel can you please plug that because you've got a really amazing bartender moment that happens i do i have a, I have, a, I have a i have a cocktail show called it's five o'clock somewhere cocktails with kevin okay and nice. also there's a ton of uh there's a ton of extra extra deck heart dex heart stuff uh during the pandemic I was bored out of my mind. So <laughs> I did a series of PSAs, public service announcements about COVID from Councilman Bill Dexter. Oh my gosh. All on my YouTube channel. There's about How did I miss five, that? five or six of them. Okay. One where uh, awesome. he's exercising. Just check them out. I will great. link them in the show notes and everyone will know. <laughs> uh, so uh, my Insta and Twitter is all of my social media stuff is at the Kevin Simons at the Kevin Simons. S Y S Y okay K K E B I N S Y M O N S yes perfect <laughs> and, and you were just on Blackish too I had fun following you yeah. uh, did that air already yeah yes, it was the, the episode finale you were? I did the season finale of Blackish it's been great because I've done a Blackish and the This Is Us the, the This Is Us was literally as the pandemic was starting 
and um, Blackish was literally when, when sets were just opening up again. I was so blessed to yeah. be on a set mm -hmm. again after being at home for over a year in my office doing Dex Heart videos. And All copy. right. <laughs> Well, and speaking of this community, too, Vincent Jones, who wrote the theme song that we talked to uh, for uh, Parks and Rec, works on Blackish and Grownish and Mixish oh. and all that stuff. Oh, um, so I was like, oh my gosh, we're small creating world. a Blackish community, too. It's a um, tiny world of this business. It's a very small yes. place. It really you just got to stick around. <laughs> uh, Facebook is just Kevin Simons. Um, okay. And then the YouTube channel is uh, the Kevin Simons channel. Okay. Watch it a lot. There's a lot. And I have a lot of like Darcy. I got a bunch of Darcy's Wildlife stuff. I've got it. I've got a ton of those commercials that Randall directed on there, the little 30-second yes. ones. So, and I'm adding more career stuff all the time. So, check that out. Subscribe if they want. If anybody wants to, smash um, that subscribe button, as the kids say. The kids today, <laughs> the kids today, uh, and then of course Cam Cameo, and uh, which yes. is great for connecting. You can always send out a message to whomever you like. And yeah. As uh, you know, coming to you from Sexy Dexy. <laughs> and as salty as you want it and um and memo for our european listeners and then um yeah and then my credits are on imdb as everybody else does. yeah mm -hmm. totally that's so awesome thank you so much sure. kevin seriously maddie do you have really any other questions though i wanted to just let you know because i don't know how much you get this but <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend kevin's putting his face in the camera <laughs> yes, <I see. laughs> um yes. my boyfriend loves Nick, he loves Ron Swanson, but his his other favorite character is Dex Hart. And I don't know what it is. And I it makes me a little nervous as to why he likes so many of the inappropriate comments. But you're his like every time Dex Hart comes up in an episode, he's like, oh, I love this guy. So I just thought you should know that. All I have to say is watch your back. No, really, literally watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> you may be taking pictures of you behind your back. Yes. Uh, well, Atlanta. first of all, congratulations on your choice in man. Oh. He, sounds, he sounds like a great guy. And uh, I love him already. <laughs> Thank yes, you for that. Yes, he's definitely got the fan base. Very sweet. Yes. Well, I was looking forward to this. Uh, and you know what was really great about it is um, not only getting to chat with you guys, looking forward to that, but revisiting some some episodes that I hadn't seen in a long time and that was mm. an absolute blast for me so thank you for that treat oh I'm so happy that you were able to be here you were so gracious with your time this is a sure. Saturday too oh, yeah it was it so is. nice talking to you you too yeah. thanks you guys and I wish you all the best with this I it's, it seems to be growing as Jay said you're on list of top parks things and which is crazy that's yes, nuts. <laughs> I nuts. love it. I love it. This is, this is where we're at now. I think I think I'm the only person in entertainment industry who does not have a podcast. <laughs> I know, literally though, I'm like literally the only one. You could start one, <laughs> or you could be a, you could be a recurring guest on ours. So that's yes. nice. <laughs> I, I, got, I got half mic will travel. I'm ready to go. Yes. Anyway, happy Saturday, you guys. Thank, thank you, you Break so the much. All your future things. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have Best a great weekend. Everything. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi. Yay! Oh, he was awesome. God, I can't handle it. I, oh, yeah, God. that was great. <laughs> he talked for so long. I'm so excited. Yeah, me we got too. so many juicy nuggets. He was wonderful. Well, and I was really happy with because I think I think because he was in so many episodes, we mm -hmm. were able to get so much Parks and Rec info out of him. I think more so than some of our other guests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was great. Yeah, I think him and Jay are the top two that we've talked to that are in the majority of episodes. But I also right. he's the first council member we've talked to, which this is, is a big deal. You yes. know, so next up is Amy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I am wondering if we could, and we don't have to keep this in the podcast, obviously, but um, if we recorded here. a little, like, please come to our podcast thing, the two of us, mm -hmm. and sent it to both Amy and Rashida <gasps> and said, can we have a best friends reunion? Like, yes. Like, hey, we we resonate a lot with the two of you. Like, could you come on our podcast thing? I wonder if they would be more inclined to do it together. Yeah. Or I, I want to do that also with um, Angela and Jenna. I would love yeah. to have a moment with them too. That'd be so cool. Yeah, a little oh collab. God. Yeah, I, I definitely also want to, th that is 100%. That should go on our list and we should do that. Like we should yeah. schedule that for our next pod uh, recording moment. Um, and like plan out what we're going to say. <laughs> also, I don't know who.
who to send it to. And that was another thing, too. I felt like uh, he'll listen to this, I'm sure, which is wild that he listens to this. This yes, is so exciting. That made me that so happy. To the podcast. Um, which, like, also, I think it probably started out as research because, right, you don't want to go on a podcast that you don't know anything about. But right. um, I really wanted to ask him or tell him, like, if you see Randall or uh, anyone or Dean anywhere mm-hmm. around, can you please tell them that we are, like, needing them to talk to us? Even if they yes. just want to send in voice memos, I don't even care. I just want to talk to you somehow or send me an yeah. email. <laughs> yeah. It's so rewarding and nice, though, to hear that the set was wonderful and that it was so collaborative. I mean, it really is just proving that everybody is, uh, you know, passionate about what they're doing. And it makes such a difference. And they're friendly. And it's nice. Also, it's very interesting because all the characters that have played, like, sleazy kind of people or mm-hmm. mean people, like Mel, the red-faced man, it, they're just they're not so cool. that. You know what I yeah. mean? But well, like they're think, so committed to their character because they're having so much fun with it, you know? Right. Well, and I think it also, also is heartbreaking, and at least for me growing up, if I would watch something and I loved it and then I found out later like that person actually wasn't nice in real life or whatever, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like seeing this vibe on Parks and Rec and then li- listening and hearing that in real life on the other side of the camera, that's exactly what it was like. Mm-hmm. It's like heartwarming that mm-hmm. like this thing that I find peace in and safety and comfort is actually exactly that Mm -hmm. for everybody Mm -hmm. else too. So it's very cool. That's awesome. Uh, Okay. Well, so again, follow him on all of his things. He's at the Kevin Simons, K E V I N S Y M O N S. Uh, And then his YouTube channel. Let me just look this up really fast. Um, So I tell you, I know he said it, but I just want to repeat it for everyone. Uh, It's the Kevin Simons channel. And yeah. Okay. So I'm looking it up and he does a lot of, uh, councilman cameos that he's been posting he has a highlight reel but my thing is he's making all these cocktails and these like Mm. mocktails and all these things he has one that's uh ginger beer mocktails oh my god i can't wait to love ginger beer me too i can't wait to try it i haven't tried it yet but um yeah so he was so nice that was so rewarding i'm Mm -hmm. so glad he was so gracious with his time i can't even handle how much and then he was all these people seem so humble. Like when he was talking mm-hmm. about like, oh, well, after you uh, talk to Jay, I don't know if I'll be interesting at all. I'm like, are you kidding but me? Like, Do you know who you're talking to? Yeah. <laughs> but he seemed like a super stand up dude. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. That's awesome. So well, go follow him and all the things. And then if you liked this episode, please, please, please um, write us a review or share it with someone that also likes Parks and Rec. Because I think this is a really interesting conversation to talk mm-hmm. about not only Parks and Rec, but also like his life and career before. Um, so that's really cool. And watch all the things that he's been in because he's super dope. And um, we had a great time with him. So thank you, yes, Kevin, for coming on. Thank you. And we will see you when we see you. Um, And yeah, just go back and listen to Jay's also if you haven't heard his. So, Um, but yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great week. There's a park and some pals and there's also therapy too.